Podcast. I'm Justin Horro. That is the triple OG. And this beautiful looking human with the sideburns of doom has been promoted already. <laughs> TNT, one show. We've got you in the middle, brother. Let's get after it, boys. Okay, so welcome to everyone who's joining us for the first episode. Basically, this show, if you want to talk, if you want to watch us talk about sports, predominantly rugby league for now, still plenty to come throughout the season. Uh, have it, we'll talk about sneaky having a sneaky punt and tell OG war stories. This is your channel, boys. This is it, <laughs> this OG. Is it. This is it. Um, straight off the bat, we want to announce that we are stoked to have the partnership of the tab on board. More as the show unfolds. Um, but if you like the show, make sure you do all the good stuff. Subscriptions, likes, comments. Go on the Apple Podcast, review us. Give us those five stars because we're going to kill it. OG, I know you're ready to go. TNT, you're pumped to be on here. But boys, what's been happening? It's been a crazy couple of weeks. It has been, man. Like, but what's been, been happening, OG? Not much. Not much. I've just been still doing stuff with the dogs. So that really hasn't stopped. Um, obviously, what we're doing now, there's a whole new little journey for all of us. Mm. Um, I think it's well documented what's been happening. So let's just get on with it. I think, you know, nothing else changes in my life. We just get to call it levels. We're leveling up. Yep. It's all good. And um, yeah, I'm excited, man. I really am. It was the first time being like all in on something like this. So I'm pumped. Yeah, yeah it's exciting. Well, obviously going through the process. Um, it's been a crazy cool couple of weeks. Thanks to everyone who's uh, reached out. But I'm really ready to get into it. TNT, how are you feeling? Straight on the camera. One episode from behind the screen. <laughs> and then we're going to hide his fucking face. All are, you, fucking are, you ready to run, are you ready to run a show? Is Dictate there, me and the OG? Oh, I'll try. But is there such thing as a bloke that's had two club debuts in the space of a month? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think. Because oh. I'm, oh. shit, I'm shitting myself. Wherever nah, David Middleton is, uh, look that up. But uh, yeah. no, nah, stoked to be here. Delighted. Uh, as May said, we're leveling up. So it's going to be a very, very exciting time and, and just can't wait to get started. Yeah, we've got some more collaborations that we want to bring on board. But again, once again, and want to thank the tab for partnering with us from day one. They're going to yeah. build with us. They've been doing stuff with Mace for a minute, but more about the show. So let's get straight into it. TNT, what do we got? Uh, first up, the Sydney Roosters are in the news. Who would have thought it's for signings? Uh, former Roosters playmaker Breith and Astor has explained how the club are able to sign so many stars after Gordon Tallis questioned their salary cap. That explanation came after Taylor suggested the Roosters <laughs> might not be playing by the rules following Buzz <laughs> Rothfield's story that the Tricolours are worth $1.8 million above the cap. This comes after the news that the Tricolours have secured the signatures of both Dominic Young from Newcastle last oh, week man. and Spencer Lenu from the Panthers for 2024. Got a quote here from Lindsay Collins, you worry less about money and more about winning. Uh, and Radley says that he's stoked as he locks in a four-year deal to re-sign. Boys, I look at this squad and the signings they've made in Lenu and Young, and I wonder if they're playing to the same rules as everybody else. Mace, you've played for the club. Can you give us your thoughts? Yeah, I think it's a great club. It's professionally run. Like um, Nick Politis is the best at what he does. They don't miss if they go after players. Mm. It's run better than your most most your clubs, and players are just jealous that they haven't got the chance to play for them. People who can sit back and who's played against them, like Gordy and that, you know what I mean? Like It's just everyone knows what's going on. You know what I mean? They just do be business better than everyone else. You know what I mean? So, like, you know, Uncle Nick, he does, he runs a fucking tight ship over there and he's the best at doing it. A lot of other clubs are just jealous. They can get and they pick who they want and they target them and they've got this whole thing to sell. Bondi, Allianz now, the players. You know what I mean? It's like a team that you want. It's the best team in the 2010s. You know, they're building towards, you know, like probably another big premiership run. Yeah, like, for you're sure. Not, it's, not a, it's not something massive to sell. Eastern suburbs, no. do you know what I mean? Like Allianz, Bondi, like it fucking sells itself, right? Plus what the Roosters are about. They win, right? Yeah, winning so championships. Winning championships helps when you're making your decision, when you're a Spencer Lenu. Now, there was another couple of – there was a other – there was a couple of clubs out there that were interested in it. They were. And, like, he chose the Roosters, right? Mm. He's just come from the most, most successful little club, uh, Penrith, and look what he wants to do now. He's getting squeezed out of the cap out there, and he's going to the Roosters. So it's not a surprise to me. Yeah, Brace said it the best. Uh, I watched him on NRL 360 a couple of nights ago, Mace, and he said it's, it's basically you, – you, you had it in a little bit of a brief there, but it's everything that it brings outside of it. So yeah, man. it was well documented. Um, you know, obviously the cheese situation, um, he's come out and said before that he took less to go from other clubs as well to go there because one, 
you're gonna you're probably gonna win footy games first and foremost because they keep building this culture and and team that Mace is alluding to, and second of all, that that network that you're able to you know we're building the levels network here, we're building our content, but that network that they've got I a still Bondi have contacts there now and East that's in that's Mace. Do you, know you, what I mean? you still so lean on them now. Eight and nine, yeah. I'm still I'm still friends with people on that board, and that's what Brace alluding to as well. It happens, man. It's one of the best clubs in in sports in Australia. So why wouldn't you want to be a part of it? You know what I mean? So like everyone is just jealous because they get shit done. Yeah. They get what they want. They target who they want and they don't miss. That's it. It's all jealousy. I get where Gordy's coming from. I understand where Gordy's coming from. I fucking totally get it. But everyone's not dumb. You know, everyone knows how, how, how they roll. Well, it's, it's how the that's, roosters, what, that's, that's how the roosters roll. Essentially, that's who the Broncos were of yesteryear. Yeah. Right? During this time, they always Bronx secured all the best people and, and made sure back in the early 90s when those dominant teams, like yep. those, everyone was flocking to the Broncos. You, no one left the Broncos. And you took no less one left. if you're a young kid potentially coming in there because you had the opportunity to win yeah. premierships. Yeah, well, that's the thing. That's the, that's the dream that they used to sell at like 92, 93, you know what I mean? 98, 97, 2000, 2006. Been a minute. Don't want to play and Gordy you. was part of all that and he was a god up there. Mm. So he wants to see the Broncos go good and all that kind of stuff. And, but he's been involved in other clubs so he knows how it goes. Yeah, yeah he, wants, he wants to see the Broncos dynasty shine yeah. and he doesn't want anyone else and that's yeah. fair enough. Um, big shout out to Egan Butcher too. He's another guy who resigned. He's, Did he resign? I love Egan I like Butcher. that kid. Yeah. I like out of, out, the Butcher out Boys. Of, out of the Butcher Boys. Um, I think Nat's obviously had a better career up, up to date, yeah. but there's big raps on Egan. Yeah, I like Egan. He's another guy who's resigned there too. So it's massive for the Roosters. They're just going to be... They're just going to be the Roosters. They're going to be uh, very hard to knock off or not be in and around the top four. Even yeah. a couple of years ago when they had multiple injuries, right? They're still nearly like – they still put their hands up and, and put up a fight in those It's that culture games. that they've built. That's yeah. Robbo. You know, a lot of the guys that have been part of that whole 2010 system, they just don't know how to lose. I don't want to play you blokes off against one another, but, Mace, you were saying that the external perception is almost jealousy and that God is jealous and that, you know – the other teams may be jealous. Scope, you haven't played for the Chiefs. Mm. How are you playing the juniors, bud? Yeah, I played hey. juniors, yeah. Under 20s, under 20s. And Do your he, fucking homework. He's, <laughs> all right? TNT, you should know, know about the boss. under 20s. That, God damn, I'll fucking fire you on I the did, spot. TNT, you should know, know about the 20s. Hey, good one, good one, good one. Hey, he's, but he nailed it. I was like... They're clubs that you were you wanted to play for. A couple of them were for – two of them were for me during my time. I was uh, – I could and, and I was jealous of Manly before I got there. But if I got, I would have loved to have got the opportunity to play for the Roosters and Melbourne. Because yeah. what? But what? What, you know, what have they got in common? They both win comps. Um, they're both successful. They've got you know seem to have really good connections. Melbourne had really good connections back in the day. Uh, it's a little bit different now. They've yeah. they've sharpened that up. And and Roosters do a good job at networking. Like there are good people in in high places at, at both those joints. So um, the older you get the more you start thinking like that too. When you're a kid, it's uh, hang around your mates, come through with your time. mates, just play good footy. You think you just want to get out there and play footy. As you start getting a little bit older, you start looking over or you start hanging out with boys during the off-season, you go, fuck, what is it? You know, that's what you're doing. Or he's going on the, you went to Barcelona before you had the club challenge a couple of years ago. Yeah. That shit's cool. I want to be a part of that. See, Dominic Young, right? Yeah. Right now, he's just gone from wherever he was in England, to Newcastle. Huddersfield. Hasn't won shit. Wakey lad. He's a wakey now he lad gets, too. Now he gets the opportunity to go to the Roosters, the Glamour Club. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he's a big, good-looking cat on he's the wing. He's going to kill it off the tries. field. He knows he's what's going to happen down the there. The so well I just look at him. He's like, I'm, I'm in a system right now that I'm not that happy with. He's still got to reach the his, um, his honours playing for England, mm. even playing for Newcastle. What's he going to do outside Joey Manu? Or someone like that, or like Suwali'i. What's he going to do out there? He can play any multiple positions. He's a big body, and they're going to love him down there. So he's going to go. You know what? I want to fucking win. First of all, I want yeah. to win premierships. I want to be successful. That's what they didn't have to sell much to fucking Dominic Young. Probably had to sell a fair bit to Spencer. You know what I mean? So because he's been through a system right now, he's a part of a system that's successful. They've been the best team in the last four years. They've probably lost like eight games. The only he thing, doesn't lose, man. The only thing that Penrith he probably have. So, Penrith don't have Bondi. Yeah, exactly. And ne <laughs> the networking, the networking and is the only, network, you know like I mean? as, as, as powerful as Penrith are and they've got some good people out there at West doing great things in the community and building up Western Sydney, but no one no comes one. close to what, like the Mark Burises, yeah. the Gingels, the obviously Uncle Nick is the OG, yeah. um, but no one can match Roosters when it comes not, to networking. Not the when they want their player. When they want that player, they'll do anything. Like, I know for a fact that Spencer would have been close to coming to the Bulldogs. Mm. And somehow, the last fucking minute, something happened. Mm. 
And then when I heard it, who it was, I wasn't fucking surprised. Mm. I'm like, shit, fuck, because I rate that kid. I'd love to be like just yeah. coach him and just have him around the club. And once I heard, I was like, mm, I feel you, Gordy. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know. Yeah. That pack at the Roosters next year, like with all these guys, he just he just matches the intensity of Radley like and Cheese. Like Hargraves and all that. He's yeah. going to probably be gone, going up Yeah, Jazz year. will be done. You think, think Jazz will put be that a lot of work. He's going to go down as one of the best props in the game. And you give it to this young bull who's fucking ready, who's been behind the Leotas and Fisher Harris's for three years. He's yeah. done coming off the bench. I want to start. Do they keep Matt Lodge? Of course I, you do. Yeah, I think they'll keep He's on training like, trial. The most. <laughs> yeah, no, that's winning well, again. But well, he's only 27 years old, right? Yeah. 26, 27 years old. So yeah. he's got about nearly at least six or seven years left in him. That's fucking at his peak. He still yeah. has a peak lodge. Yeah. You know, he's still a he's good He's still kid. capable way he's more. He's still capable. Yeah, a heap, a heap more. So um, Lindsay Collins, another one. Yeah, I like Lindsay Collins. You know, the two Egan brothers, you yeah. know, Angus Crichton. Egan and Nat. Um, yeah. Just on Angus Crichton, mm. uh, the club has applied for salary cap dispensation as he seeks treatment for mental illness. The gunback role will be out for at least 10 weeks before an assessment on his well-being will be carried out. Roosters Power Brokers are now seeking cap relief for Crichton's reported $750,000 salary. However, there's been some conjecture about whether dispensation should be approved First of all, uh, all of us here hope that Angus's condition uh, improves in the near future and we hope he's doing well. Uh, but as for the compensation side of its scope, I'll go to you first. Are there a chance of getting dispensation or is there too much grey matter? Yeah, I think plenty of grey, mate. First of all, like I said, just want to echo what you said. They're very sympathetic with what, what's happening with Angus. There's a lot of you know rumours going on behind the scenes, but at the core of it, he's not going through uh, – he's not, he's not in a good space at the moment. So – um, I've had a few little dealings with that Angus over the years. He's a good dude. I spoke to Connor yeah. Watts about him, Connor Watson about him, and, and he, um, he's trying to help him out as much as he can. Obviously, a really tough situation, but there is a lot of grey in it, mate. And it's, uh, it's, it's probably something that – it's, it's very rare that something like this will happen again. So um, we just talked about the benefits of what the Roosters get in the sense players are drawn to them um, and they – they're, the way that they've built their squad is is off the back of paying less for players because they're willing to go to the club. So if you're the other clubs, you you already think you're an unfair advantage in the sense where it's not cheating. It's just you feel like you're you're playing catch up with the Roosters, and I can't see this going across the NRL mace and no. getting the tick of approval not on that. it. I mean, as like, much as I think everyone would be sympathetic with the situation, I just can't see it happening. Everybody in the NRL fraternity knows what's happening with, with mm. Angus and we're like, fucking get better, kid. You know mm. what I mean? Like we're pretty, you know, it's pretty intense there. So it's not a joke. We just want the, want him first and foremost, like his mental well-being is number one. Footy's fucking second or third. Absolutely. Like way off, you know what I mean? So the Roosters are just trying their arm, yeah, trying their luck. You know, can we get can we get something here? Like maybe, you know, maybe we can, maybe we can't. Like as if you're not going to try it. You know, he's mm. 750000 on the cap. You know yeah, I mean? there's a good, there's so a good if, chance he so doesn't play you're not, again. You're not, as if you're not yeah. going to try it because maybe there is a good chance he won't play again. You know, hopefully he does play again this year, but like maybe the chance is he won't. So as if they're going to – it's only the right thing by them to do it. Yeah, they have to look they into it. They have to it. do it. You have to look they into have it. They have to look at the worst case scenario and that's the worst case. And, you know, hopefully things work out and he gets to be back on the football field. But, you know, first of all, I hope he just is all right. He gets out of this and he's all good. Yeah, I think first and foremost, everyone's the same. Like you just want to make sure that this this guy gets healthy, and hopefully, you know, we're in a world where he's able to play footy again. But yeah. there are legit uh, questions around that. Yeah, so, of um, man, I just and it'd I be, it'd be, so, it'd so be so sad because you yeah. just think about even take the footy aside. Um, you know, his his family, thinking of his yeah. family, and, and thinking of the person first and foremost, but even before footy. Absolutely, boys. We have dispensation for physical injury. Yeah, sorry. Has yeah, there been anything else? Like no, nah, not, like, not like mentally. This, or, like I haven't injuries? seen mentally before. Yeah, physically. There's the Sam Burgess ones, right? Is that what you? But that's when you're medically to? done. Yeah. The road that I'm right. going down is that we have all these issues. Say, GI, yep. uh, Ethan Lowe, and Sam Burgess were all medically retired, if I remember correctly, for physical health issues. Yeah. This is a mental health issue, and. Mental health is such a big thing now and, and it's great that, you know, we certainly publicise people's issues and we talk about it and we've broken down that stigma. Do we sort of put it back in, a, in the box a little bit if we sort of reject 
dispensation for a mental injury, do you well, think? Yeah, no, so that's where it gets hard because, you, like you said, you've seen examples across the board of other injuries physically. Uh, because it's mental, me, uh, the mental side of the, the game, we just haven't seen it enough yet. So it's a really tricky one. It's a, it's a tricky one to balance for them. They've got to be really sympathetic with it, but yeah. at the end of the day... Yeah, it's 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 in its own little box. Well, the fair, Roosters will so. just show their case. Yeah, they'll put everything in and show the board and everyone who they have to show, and then they'll make their judgment. So it's up to the NRL, right? It's not up to anyone else. So it's up to these guys to go. Okay, well, I don't think he's going to play. Therefore, boom, dispensation. So that's what they're going to have to do. They show all all what's happening with uh, Angus at the moment, and then they'll have to make sh- they'll have to sit around on their board and make their decision off that. What about, That's what it is. That's as simple as it is. If if Angus doesn't play this year, right? Because this is the uh, again, I've seen this on. Uh, I think Paul Kent uh, mentioned it on three hundred and sixty. Is that uh, it's the the dis, dispen- dispensation dispensation? Yeah. I was trying to struggle to get that out. It's for, actually it's actually for next year, right? So yes. that's what they're looking for. They're trying to get it for next year. Just say, is this something worth readdressing in halfway through the season if Angus isn't back playing in yes. that ten week? This is uh, and, this, and then this you, is and it. Then you have a look at it again. A massive big dealer. They're looking yeah. at it for next year, right? Yeah. So just like whatever, like just let wait. him see what happens. Yeah, make during sure the year. Look after have his a look health at it first. in like six months and see how where Angus is there. Yeah. And then we reassess. Why is it even making the fucking news? Absolutely. I think you've certainly got to just wait and see with it and see how Angus's condition is. In, you know, Too much grey area at the moment. Months. Too Absolutely. much. I mean, it's not enough time. Absolutely. Uh, let's jump into uh, a bit of news from Parramatta. And Mitchell Moses' reputation is allegedly taking a hit over the frustrating ongoing delay on his 2024 contract call, according to, you guessed it, Buzz Rothfield. Buzz. Brad Arthur front of the media through the week and was confident that his star halfback would stay, but at the time of recording, we know nothing. Not all smoke and mirrors at the Eels, though, with Mike Acevo on a two-year deal, uh, an extension, that will keep him at the club until the end of 2025. Mace, this surely has to be done in the next 24 hours before the season starts. You'd hope so. And I thought he was their dude. They signed Dylan Brown, didn't they? Yeah, they deal's did. down. Deal, deal's it? done. Everyone else is down. Like, um, Zeebo, like The more people they sign, the less cash there is, the yeah. more signs that he's going somewhere else. So if it's not done before round one, which is tomorrow, I don't, I don't think he'll stay. Mm. I honestly don't think he'll stay. He, well, there, the must too much, a, there must be too much. There must be too much. Yeah, too much going on, or someone's coming in with the last little hit and gone boom. I think that that's it. That's what I'm thinking. Like if you're the Tigers, you've just gone fucking whack, or someone else whack. And just gone there. Yeah, we'll think about another three hundred thousand or something like that. So he's twenty nine years old. He's not twenty five. He's not going to have two max deals left in him. He's probably got one. The argument is that Parramatta are offering him a four year deal, whereas West Tigers are offering him a five. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's going to take him to thirty four, thirty five. Yeah, right. And that's right. what he probably wants. He doesn't want to do a two a two deal and back himself. He's like, well, I'll fucking just sit here for five years, be 30, and then retire. He'll be done. Do you know what I mean? Like he won't have to go, oh, I'm 33, 34, maybe I've got another fucking two or three years left in me. No, I want five. And then I'm out. And then I'm out. He's, the kid's got a plan. Mm. And stick, so stick to it. I think it's pretty, it's a yeah, solid plan. He's playing like, it right. He's, play, he's played it great. He's got two clubs, two or three clubs in his back pocket that are willing to pay a shitload. Yeah. And Parramatta just got to pay the kid. Buzz is art. Look, and we'll start, we'll go right off to the top, back to Buzz. Frustrating in terms of like, yeah, it'd be frustrating for fans. Fans obviously want to see it gut, get it done. Frustrating for who? But, it's but, fucking, sorry, this fucking one person needs to care about yeah, this. Yeah, it's exactly. fucking Mitch Moses. That's Fuck what, everyone. No one in the playing group cares about what- No one cares. Obviously, the playing group would love to have him, mm. but when people are going through this shit, whether it's a teammate or whatever, everyone wants everyone to eat. Despite, 100%. There's despite, no frustration. Sorry, sorry. There's, sorry, there's yeah. no frustration between players. If you're off contract yes. right now in 2023, and I know you're fucking dealing with someone else- Good luck to you, Hoz. Yeah. Sign that deal. Take care of your family. Everything like that. That's what's happening in this today's today's generation. It ain't twenty years ago where like selfish prick could bust the whole group up. No, no, no. It doesn't no. happen like that, boss. It's boys fucking, are still mates. boys are still mates. Still Brown still hanging out with Papa Lee now. You know what I mean? You like know? they're like, still you know boys. I mean? It's not. It's called social media. It connects yeah. everyone. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's what's happening. So that's that w- would not cause any frustration between any player or nobody. Maybe the young kid who's coming through the system who might be held on, all right, you're our second guy because you're in Jersey Fleet, but fuck it, there's a, a pecking order. Mm. It's all about Mitchell Moses at the moment, and that's the way the club's looking at it and the players are looking at it. There's no fucking animosity towards you. Mm. You're off contract, fuck who cares? You put him for three or four years, go get, go clean up. Yeah, Get your money, kid. 
the it's thing- different mentality, man. It's a fucking sort of American mentality now. Yeah. It's just a shift. It's all about players. Players will still be boys after the game. We're still going to be boys. I can say it now. Like, I've been retired for years. I'm still boys with the same guys I was in 2002, 2003, and 2004 yeah. and onwards. It doesn't stop. You go to grand finals, you play in Origin, you go for Australia, all that sort of shit. The friendship doesn't stop. You know what I mean? So it's like Mitch Moses goes and plays for the Tigers for five years. Who gives a fuck? You know what I mean? The part Parramatta about- fans, dude. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I don't give a shit about Parramatta Shout fans. Shout out to Lukey Stowe, Parramatta f- yeah, fuck you, fan, Lukey. You? <laughs> um, yeah, but like that's the thing. I mean, of mm. course the fans care. I love, you know, fans, are, they bring the whole game together. It's fucking awesome. But they're the only ones that will be hurt. Mm. No one else. The, uh, the, the fact that Brad Arthur's come out and mentioned it, you know, after not talking about it for a while, it's... It, Might so, be getting it in. Yeah, that, that's why I started to lean more towards it was going to get done because I've had a little bit to do with BA over the years. He's, he's not a guy that talks for no reason. He must think it's pretty close. Well, he must be under because he might be feeling if he goes, I'm under the pump. Yeah, because Mitchie's been probably their best player for the last three years. Yeah, he's you know up there. Like yeah. you, lose, you know, and you know how hard he's you like. How hard half. is it yeah, to yeah. get a good half these days? That's what every coach is thinking. Have a look around the game. Do you know what I mean? There's only a handful of genuine halves you go and pay a million dollars for, and they've got one now. So as if you wouldn't want to secure it. It's only so like it's that's ba going fuck. It. We haven't got anyone coming through. I can't get anyone. We've got a kid here now. Fucking pay him, please. Give him five years. Last question on it. Five years at the Tigers, four years at the Eels, same amount of money. Where do you go? He stays at Para. Yeah, I think he stays at Para. Yeah. Tigers he, have to as, pay As, as I said, unless it, how, how's he, there's a lot as of factors As a Tigers here. fan, obviously. Ah, yeah, I forgot yeah, about this. Yeah, I forgot TNT's a Tigers fan. He's been keeping on the low. Um do you like that sort of contract that they're throwing in? Five-year deal? Is that a lot of money for you? I you- think that it's a culture-changing signing in the sense of there's mm. a perception right. around the league that the Tigers can't bring attract. in the talent or can't yep. attract certain players yeah. that they want. I think that irrespective of the amount of money that it is or the years that it's for, I think that it instantly changes perception around the league that we're not to be fucked with. I, mean, I think you're right. And that's the way I see it. So mm. similar to Asatasi when he moved to South. I think, yeah, I think you're right. It's, it is a shift. Good it's good a comparison. culture shift. It is. Because I think if Moses stays, he's like, yeah, fuck it. I don't care. I don't believe in where you go on Tigers. You're saying a lot of shit. I don't care. Mm. I don't believe in it. Even if that's coming from a kid who went through the system there. Mm. Um, Mitch needs to, like, there's a couple of factors in there. How's his body going? How is he mentally? Does he still want to compete? Does he think I can compete at a high level till I'm 34, 35? Watching him, he does. Watching, Watching him, he does. now, I think he does. Body I think, looks I good. Think, I don't think he's, yeah. he's – I think he's reaching his peak. Same. That's why I think I mentally – I still think he's got plenty so of So maybe he could go to the Tigers. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a 50-50 for me, man. I yeah. swear. Because he's played there before, he thinks it's un – you know, he's got some oh, unwritten shit. Factor. Benji would be a big factor. He's got so much respect in the game, Benji. Yeah, like, not- especially from young boys that have grown up around there. You've got to remember, man, Moses and Brooks and all that come through when Benji was the guy. Yeah. Benji and Robbie were the guy. Now they're there. Um, I know they've kept, they've been close. You know, Unfinished business, man. Yeah. Like That's what, that's what it, his mentality would be. I'd go back to Leichhardt and bring a premiership back in the next three or four years. Those young kids that it's they've got one. coming through, they're no joke, man. I've sort of watched a couple of their back rolls and a couple of their front rolls. I rate them highly. Mm. All they need is a seven, man. Mm. That's yeah. what I mean. And that's why I think the Tigers have gone fucking all in last minute. Yeah, maybe they come back, chuck another little hungee on top of it yes. again. Yes, and it's a big deal Get up five the, years. So, what is, so it was reported 1.4 at the Tigers for five and 1.2 for four. So maybe they come back in with just a 1.5 for five. Does that get it done? Yeah. 500,000 is a lot would, of money, man. Highest paid, of all, highest paid player of all time. Mm. That's who we go down as. That might be what gets him across the line. Anyway, and shout over. out to Sevo too. Mike Sevo, two year deal. Yes. Big Buller, Thursday night game. Yeah. I've had a look at the odds on Tab. Try scorer. Two, extra couple <laughs> of years, two tries. Mike Sevo. It's the Omen. He loves omen. scoring at Combank. It's the Omen Bank. $5, you can get that on the Tab, so help yourself. There you go. Brought to you by the Tab. <laughs> Beautiful. Over to the Dragons. I'm sorry, 1.5 mil. That's yeah. mad. I love yeah. how the game has just gone from here to here. Get paid, kids. Go get it. Just kids, I keep referring to them as kids. I got, I got, men, I, young men. I got this one in for you, mate. Sorry, so, bro. TNT, you can. Sorry, bro. I, was, oh. I, put, I put this up specifically for you because I've seen you comment on Jammer's uh, right. um, uh, video going. that he had. NRL legend James Graham fears there may be a snitch among the ranks of the Dragons after Ooh. a heated exchange between two players in Mudgee made its way into the press. 
My issue with this is who is the grass that has gone and leaked it? Graham told Triple M. Who is the snitch? Why are you going to tell? Why are you going and telling the media for? Boys, this is a bit of a non-event as in Ravalara and Musgrove. Uh, is that it? They had a bit of a wrestle or some shit? Yeah, is, that, is that the story? Yeah, they had a bit of push and shove. Yeah, words it's fucking big word. news if you wrestle these days, isn't it? So, fucking Jackie Boy. Jam is spot on, though. Exactly. Why the fuck did this get out? Yeah. I hate shit like this. And I'm like, as soon as Jammer said that, I'm like, fucking good on you. Like, he's just old school, man. He thinks like us. Whatever fucking state, whatever he's happened. Been in it too. Whatever Jammer happened, man. shit for no reason yeah. as well. Whatever happened, man. Like, you just leave it where it happened. You don't go tell your fucking manager. You don't go tell the media or anyone else. That's an inner sanctum shit. As soon as that stuff gets broken, that breaks your trust between the players yeah. subconsciously. You might say all this shit. This does won't break us. It won't break us. They're ready to get broken, the dragons, of all the shit that's been happening. This is, might be just a little fucking tip of the iceberg. You know what I mean? Yeah, like this sums just, up the last couple of years for the yeah, dragons. Yeah, you know, but like- There's been yeah. so much in-house. I've it should so never be like that, man. You fucking like, just, so you just, just, just If you're that player, like, what are you doing? Yeah. Going until like your manager or your me- the media dude or someone that you know. So you what you can within twenty four so, hours. So you so your boys are getting in trouble and you put yeah. pressure on your club. Yeah. There's already enough pressure on you kids. Mm. Putting pressure on yourself. Too. You put pressure on yourself. Everyone is copping it at the Dragons at the moment. That's the last thing they wanted, man. And like and, and as I said, like who the fuck is it? Like I'd be worried if I was at a club now and this just happened. I'd be like, who is it? Yeah, would, and group, I would be searching as a playing group, and I'd be searching fucking. to fucking find out who it is so he gets fucking out of the club. That's how strongly I'd feel about that. It pissed me off that much. I'd hold a fucking meeting and make sure you fucking find out who it is. Who is it? And just own up to it. And if you don't own up to it, we're probably everyone's probably like looking at somebody and they know it's him. There. You just want it. Idea. You want it out. Yeah. So you already have a chat to the coach. Don't pick that fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Scope, you got any that's more? It. That's how it's done. No, nah, that's it, mate. I just wanted to address it because I, I see Mace. So it was, a, it was. Look, it's a week old now. Uh, I just wanted to get on top of it. I just don't like that shit. It's yeah, not good in it. It's yeah, not I good. I hate that side of the. See, this is a part. This is a part of what happens in rugby league, though, because sometimes um, when you go through a couple of tough seasons, people. You know, as much as we say we've got mad relationships with players yeah. from over the years, there's also a few fucking oh, lemons mate. from our years as 100%. well. Hundred percent. People, lot. That you, you, you know, lot. You, you go and have a fucking beer after. Potentially, you might have a beer. You know, you didn't play the best, or it's an L, and then you end up finding out that the fucking coaches have found out about it. Just not a big, not a fan of those guys. Mm. Um, and like I said, it sort of sums up where the dragons are at. I think there's a lot of um, dysfunction from the top. Yeah, uh, it's come all the way from the. You know, it goes back to the Dragons in the in the Illawarra. I believe it goes all the way back yeah. to there, to the core of it, and then it comes down to the coaching. No, not everyone's on the same board. Then you look at the strength of the credit of the playing group. Mm. Like Ben Hunt's a senior player there. Who else runs it with him? A bunch of um, young little kids down there, bro. Mm. There's not much leadership in that club. You know what I mean? So if you did have a you chat, don't have the runs on the board, you know Tarek they? and that's gone. There's a big, big deal's gone. Like Woodsy's probably the main guy down there that would. Um, but Woodsy's at the back end of his. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm too. saying. But like, it's, like, it's that's, hard for but him that's to really. It. Like you say, yeah. you got Woodsy and you got Ben Hunt. Yeah. Like flying the flag for those. Boys. Jack DeBellin like, potentially. Yeah. He's a he's a Illawarra junior. Jack mm. Bird. I don't know if he's the sort of guy that would say too much, but. Um, Shit yeah. go anyway. Yeah, it should go from uh, whoever whoever leaked it anyway. I just wanted yeah. to get that out there. Yeah, but yeah, as I said, the boys are under a pump. Under the pump anyway. You don't need this. They certainly do not. Uh, the Dolphins have continued to raid on crosstown rivals Brisbane by poaching a second star in the space of a few days. After announcing the signing of gun centre Herbie Farmworth on Friday, yeah. the Redcliffe club has now pinched state of origin forward Thomas Flegler from the Broncos. Both of them will arrive at the Dolphins in 2024. Mace, is this the turning point in the player market for the Dolphins? Oh, I wouldn't say it is, but it's just a little flex from Uncle mm. Wayne across the, across the bay there. Mm. Um, Fle- I like him. Hey, Kevy, I got your boys here, hey, Herbie mm. and like Flegler, Jersey Flegler getting over there. <laughs> and like, like they're two young, young bucks. You know what I mean? Like that's, they're supposed to be the future of the Broncos. And Wayne's going, you know what, Kevy? I'll take those. So it's just a little bit of a flex gun. You're still my little disciple. I run this shit. You know what I mean? So it's like- That's, I, that's I, an OG move. We know all Yeah, that it is. A proper OG, OG move. Proper like Wayne's just move. like, I still got him. I got these guys. <laughs> <laughs> and Kevin being like, fuck. Yeah. Sick of you, Wayne. Um, but yeah. I love a few things. One, I love the players. I think they're yeah, both- Yeah, I rate both of them highly. I think um, they're only just reaching their potential. Herbie had an Unreal World Cup off the back of- 
Obviously, everyone sort of found out about Herbie last year, but I thought even when the Broncos were struggling, he was one yeah, of their yeah, best. I've, I've loved the trajectory of what he's done coming over from the UK, really testing himself, establishing himself as a, a really solid left centre. Uh, and then Flegler, same thing. I know around the league, we've got a few mates that are still in the league. A few of the boys wanted Flegler, man. Like a lot of a yeah, lot of players heaps in, and of around heaps. The, in and around the le- league found out that he was becoming available. Uh, the price that he was going to get in the Broncos wasn't going to be... Other clubs were able to, to offer more flegler than he was going to get the Broncos. So yeah. there was there was chat that he was going to leave, and a few of the boys in high positions who sort of you know wanted to get flegler. So two great signings. The only thing I'm a little bit concerned about too, and this is the problem with Redcliffe up to this point, yeah. it's just positional value. So we talk about it all the time. Centers, they're all a dime a dozen at the yeah, moment. Like yeah, they, at they've the got moment, some good centers at the game. At the moment, you know, in, in terms of value across the board, they're still not addressing which is. We we're about to get to, we're about to allude to. The most crucial part of a team is the spine. Mm. And they've got so many question marks in the spine. Yeah, these are great signings. Um, if I look, you know, you look back and um, you see a guy like, you know, Ashley Harrison, who was a, a really good player at South and, and Roosie's went to the Titans, sort of didn't move the needle as good as he was and as, as great of a career as he had. 250, 300 games, played Origin mm. every year, yeah. but didn't really move the needle for, for Gold Coast Titans. And there's a part of me that sort of sees like Flegler and Herbie playing really well for Redcliffe, but is it going to change the trajectory of them next year if they don't address the most important part, no. which is the spine for me? So the good points. Um, they are good points because you got to you got to be. It's important who you do bring in, you know, especially as a new club and like they've bought in. They got the Bromwich brothers, Kafusi, and all those guys to set the tone. Yep, and build the culture, everything, the culture, everything like that because they've been from Melbourne. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's probably a reason why Milford's not playing seven. You know, I mean, there's, there's there's some good things there, but like you know, Herbie's not going to. He needs a good six. He needs a good seven. Mm. He needs a good back row. He's probably going to have that in Kafusi. You know what I mean? Like, but he's not going to get clean ball. Mm. You know, from his from his six there, you don't even know who it is. Yeah, so you know what I mean. So the, and, the, the and just like Flegler, so yeah, so Flegler, he's just another middle. Yeah, he's like he's nothing like a, a junior, like a Tal Malolo or anything like that. He's not explosive. He's, he's he's got some good football in him. He's a solid, like he's a solid, more than solid first grader. Yeah, but exactly what you said, if you're alluding to like moving the needle that much, he yeah. won't because yeah. Jesse Bromwich and that would be doing that job as well. Yeah. It'd be just good for him to get underneath those guys, Tommy Gilbert, through and Lou and and. Like learn a hell of a lot every week. How to be a pro, all this sort of stuff. Melbourne sort of culture, which they'll be, it'll be good at. Eight hundred thousand dollars a year. Is That's that, a big number. Is, right? is that good value? Who got that? Flagler. Flagler. Fuck. How is that is that a hundred? Is that a hundred percent? No, I, I, he's on some I, fucking coin because because of potential. They're paying on potential. Yes. This kid yes. could potentially play for Australia. Yeah. He's not going to be the pain horses yeah. and all that kind of stuff. You is, know what I mean? He, but he's, has he got a bit of a modern day Webkey about him? Like he's, he's got more to offer in the sense Webkey was very straight up and down, yeah. but he's a fucking OG. Like, but he gives me like he uncompromising. Plays big minutes. He's gonna play big minutes. He's yeah. gonna keep testing you. He's got a bit of shit about him. Yeah, he's got that. He's got all the fucking yeah. intangibles that I want as a young prop. Yeah. You know what I mean? If I, if I hit him at the Bulldogs. Big, strong, He's fit, mobile. fast, good offload. Got some decent number. Some de- decent footy IQ. He's just been, you know, I don't know, like it's been suppressed a little bit with those skills because you've got your pain horses and all those sort of things. He's been injured a little bit at the start of the year last year. Yeah. Sort of took, took He doesn't him a while. even start took, every, Yeah, it took him a while to He's start. He's off the bench for yeah, him. That's what I mean. Like, so you've got that other, that other guy starting in front of him. So he's like, fuck, I want to start. I'm a starter in this game. Yeah, Corey Jensen, I think, started. So Corey front. Jensen started most of last year because I think that he was injured at the start of the year. So yeah. you're paying on, like, I think. He's got the potential, potential to reach yeah. 800. Yeah. You might as well pay it now than in five years. Yeah. Yeah, you could see. Yeah. Like, if you look yeah. at, yeah, for instance, to the extreme version of it, like when Payne Haas first signed his big deal early on yeah. with the Broncos, at the time it looked like overs, but then after a year or two, yeah, you're like, it, looked, you're it, paying looked like a, it looked like massive unders. Mm. So maybe that's what they're Even doing. Even Tal Malolo, when he yeah. played, signed for a mill, I'm that's like, that's true. massive. I'm like, yeah. 2016, I'm like, you need to pay him more. Yeah. Like one point three would would be suffice for them. Yeah. Like yeah, I think yeah, it's weird. So they probably yeah they are paying on potential, and they're like, all right, well, I think you can reach that. And Wayne, Wayne would market. never pay that. He much. had a mad market. I know that for sure. Wayne would never pay that much for a front rower. Mm. I don't know. He would for a front rower, just yeah. not wingers. Yeah. <laughs> Wayne's been in the media a couple of times this week, boys. Mm. Uh, mainly about Anthony Milford. Uh, he was quoted as saying, the reality is, where does Anthony want to be in 12 months' time? Does he want to be back on top of his game or in and out of the side like a yo-yo? Anthony is at an age now where he is mature enough. He knows all about the game. He has been through enough tough times, so he has to make a deliberate choice about where he wants to be. 
Scope, is there a world where Milford makes it back into this side or even finds the form that we saw in 2014, 2015? Very hard to find the form mm. in 2014, 2015. He's one of the best players in the comp at that point. Um, I Pretty much uh, a grand final loss away from winning the Clive Churchill, I believe, if yeah. uh, the Broncos had won it. But it's, it's exactly – Wayne doesn't – he doesn't get it twisted like OG yeah. says all the time. He, he picks his words right. And this is this is the reality of where Anthony Milford's at. Yes, I believe he can fight his way back into the team because, you know, I'm looking at Sean O'Sullivan and, and a rookie in Isaiah Cato who I think is going to be a real player. But, you know, even just, you know, Sean O'Sullivan straight off the bat, he's not a proven half Neither, in this and competition. Nor is Katoa, is it? Like- so Milford's at that age, and Jesse alluded to it too in his press conference, everything gets a little bit harder. Like, you get a little bit older, you get to training, and I'm not even close to what Anthony Milford, like, my level was, but once you start getting to about 29, 30, training gets a little bit harder, you get a bit sore in the, uh, in the wrestle sessions, weight sessions become... So if you don't have that drive, there's about three or four young kids behind you who are 18, 19 that do have that drive, who are pushing themselves, and obviously Katoa has been that guy. They've alluded to it in the words you can tell by the way that they've worded things. Uh, Jesse Bromwich is not a sort of guy that comes out and... Yeah, and, say and, and say what he said. So they're trying to put a rocket up, uh, Milf, and I think they're doing it. I honestly believe they're doing it from a place of love because, and and a place of need. Like they're mm. they're almost saying like, "Fuck, we we need we need you to get your shit together." Because if you're looking at you're looking at O'Sullivan and Katoa, who essentially were both of Penrith's backups last year. Yeah. Um, you know, O'Sullivan. Filled in when Cleary was out. Then they had Kurt Fors, but Isaiah Katoa was a Penrith youngster coming through. Yeah. So essentially, they've got Penrith backups in the halves. So and it's Wayne, important for Milf to um, to make sure he's doing the right things to get back in the team ASAP. And Wayne wouldn't um, throw a rookie in there. No. In front of the guy who's played 250 games, Origins, it, yeah. and, and a grand final. Yeah. Like he wouldn't do that unless he was fucking dead serious on you not putting in the work off the field. If he was fit enough, and doing all the little one percenters that we want him to do, like if you're part of the leadership group or whatever, he would be he would be wearing the number six, regardless of trial form. It's just the work that he would have been doing. You would have seen his attitude at training. You would have been seen his attitude in the gym, his attitude at wrestling, his attitude every single day. So this looks like an attitude readjustment. And I think the players mm. have been involved in it, mm. and they've gone. They've all sat down, and Wayne's going, "What do you think?" And they're leadership like, group. "I don't fucking want him in the team." Mm. That's what it's. That's what it's happened. And these guys from Melbourne. I know the Dolphins now, but they're fucking hardcore down there. They make decisions like that. I've been in good clubs, man. When it's like you're part of that, you're part of the fucking club. You make decisions on players. It's fucking hard as it is. They would have made that call because for the betterment of the team, and maybe for the betterment of the Katoas, like he's and the betterment for Milf. Yeah, or maybe like they just think you know everyone thought he's going back to Wayne. He's going to reproduce 200, 2015 form. Fucking no, it's not going to happen. He's a lot older. He's what is he thirty? Yeah, he's been around the game since 2011-12. Yeah, I remember playing against a kid when I was at Newcastle. Do you know what I mean? Like, but he's been around for this is his 10th, 11th preseason. It's fucking hard to get up to that. He's had a lot of shit going off the field. So I want to see that kid get back and play the best football and absolutely kill it, get back into origin and all that kind of stuff. I want to see it. But you got to see it off the field. If you're if you're Jesse Bromish and all that, you, you haven't seen it and you're like, fuck it. Yeah, draw a line in the sand. Right, and you can here. have those conversations too. And as, as an OG, like because Milf's an OG, he's been around for a yeah. minute now. So you can take it one way or the other. One, you can go, oh, "Fuck, I'm an OG. Don't need to deal with this. I'm yeah. done." Sort of, you know, put the cue on the rack. Or he can he can go, "Man, I've got a lot of respect for Jess, Ken, Felice, what they've done in the league." Yeah, all right, let's check yourself. Have a look in the mirror. Go work hard. Support the kid yeah. first and foremost. He's got to support both O'Sullivan and Katoa, uh, and then. It doesn't you know? There's a good chance that they get beaten by the Roosters on the weekend. There's a good chance they lose the first couple of games. I think they're the best possible matchup that they get in the first five weeks. Dragons. So there's a good opportunity opportunity for Milf to get himself back in the team. So long year, I, man. I, long year. Hopefully, have this conversation twenty right round, round twenty six and like yep. Milf. Remember, Milf didn't play round one. He killed, played Origin, all that sort of shit, or yep. whatever, or leading into Origin. I hope I hear those stories. Yeah, this story sucks right now for that for that guy. You know what I mean? But it is what it is, and hopefully he goes the other way and absolutely kills it and shuts everyone up. Because you can go the other way, it's a fucking weak option. Absolutely. All right, before we get into the preview, just want to roll with something. Is there anything else you want to add to that, TNT, or are you good? No, we're good. Okay, as I said at the top of the show, we are proud to be partnering with the Tab, and they 
uh, introducing Bets Friends. It's new on the Tab app, so what they want you to do is go on to the Bets Friends tile. Punters can create their own profiles and follow our Levels podcast team for our exclusive tips from us. Every week we'll go through and we'll have a, a, an exclusive market on there for you. So one thing that I'm going to get going this year is I'm going to be chasing the eight OG <laughs> TNT. The so at the start of the season... You have season, to fill me in. You know I'm hopeless to that At shit. the start of the season, <laughs> every, every team's chasing the eight. Yeah, so right. I'm, I'm chasing the eight in a different way. I'm chasing the perfect round of eight and any time try scorer from every game. I want to get all eight eventually by the end of the year. So wow. I am going to game by game give you my tips. Um, exclusive odds at the tab. I'll call them out at the end. But what you can do is you can go on to the Bets Friends app See what the skip's tipping if you're not watching the show. Well, you will be watching the show, but then you can go on nice and easily. Go on the app. Uh, copy my pick straight onto your bet slip. Boom, get onto it. I've just chucked a little 10 on it. Gamble responsibly, of course. Um, but yeah, that's it. So let's roll in the preview. And, it's friends, eh? And right. chasing the eight, chasing the grateful eight. What skip. can I chase? Is that just your whole thing? Well, if you want, if you want, to, if you want to tell me who's going to score, we can go week to week. Right. You okay. want to get, we'll do you want something. To get we'll do something. Let's okay. do something like that. All right. So, um, I can come yeah, up that's with a some. vibe. Yeah. yeah, we'll come up. We'll come up with a try score for every game. If you want to chuck your, you, you feeling good about a game? You let me know, yeah. and I'll chuck it in there. Uh, but yeah, I'll pick a try score. Last year, uh, I did it. Started from halfway through the season. I got um, six from eight, six from eight once, and seven from eight. Once. Didn't get the eight. I just missed the great for eight. Ooh, just missed the great for eight. Grateful eight. eight. And, 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 and I'm still... I'll be the hateful eight. <laughs> <laughs> you're the grateful eight. I'm the hateful yeah, eight. You're, you're just picking all the yeah. all the big boppers. <laughs> but let's get into the all round right. one preview. Oh shit! First game of the first round of the 2023 NRL season sees Parramatta take on Melbourne. At Combank Stadium. Boys, just a quick look at the markets. Melbourne are currently favourites at $1.74 head to head. Parramatta outsiders at $2.10. Uh, Melbourne are at under 2.5, whereas Parramatta are over 2.5. Uh, how do we see this one going, Mace? I'll go to you first. Yeah, what is it, 21 in a row? 21 in a row. 21 yeah. years in a row, guys. That's 21 crazy. years in a row they have not lost round one. And I'm not going to. I don't think I'm going to bet against them either. I think Parramatta's decent. Like, they're pretty good. But, like, losing Papali'i and, like, um, who's a guy who's not playing Madison's this week? Madison's not playing. Madison, three weeks. Ma- imagine Sean being Lane, Madison. Sorry, Sean imagine Lane being sure. Madison. Uh, but just say for your lock now, Hopgood's thanking him. But all these other players would be that fucking filthy on him because he's not yeah. playing the post. We said this last year. We alluded to it last year. It's such a shit go from him. Anyway. Especially uh, yeah. considering uh, Sean Lane broke his jaw in the, in yeah. the, in the trial. So that's a massive loss yeah. Lane. So, it makes, so it even, a, it makes it even harder not so have got a rookie. Now. they've got a rookie sort of back row, haven't they? It's Josh Hodgson. They're still going to have those combinations. Reed Marnie's been there for three or four years running the show. I know how yeah. good he is. So Bryce Cartwright, Matt Dury, and Jermaine Hopgood. There's the, that might be the problem right there because the, the back line doesn't really change from last year. Yeah, but like – you're just simply going off Melbourne's spine, the seven, six, and nine. Like they're still one of the best, best in the game, top three in their position in the world. You know that four pack Welsh is back. You got you got Big Nels, Katoa, King, Lorio, Lero, Lero. It's a decent. They'll be all Melbourne style yeah, players. Melbourne. You know what you're going to get. You're not going to get any easy, easy like let ins or anything like. They're going to wrestle the fuck out of it. It's going to be aggressive, and Melbourne just don't lose round one. So I just think they got too much experience for them. I think. Yeah, with think, round one, not experience on, on the whole fucking thing and go for mm-hmm. each team. I just think that whole culture, they, they don't really lose and it's strong. And they don't usually lose games like this. So when I started, when I looked at Melbourne Storm, probably like you just say, you look look at Melbourne Storm, once you realise all the players that were going to leave last year in the Bromwich Brothers, Kafusi, like we talked about before, even Cheese, who, yeah, you know, even, if, lost, even if he didn't lost. start, he had such a great impact off the bench. I thought it might be hard because, you know, They've been they've been big grabs around Melbourne on this Trent Liero kid for a while. He's played you know well in spurts for him. Alisi Katoa, who we all think yeah. could be a player from the Warriors, but there was a heap of question marks. The fact that they're now going up against respectfully Bryce Cartwright, Matt Dury, and Jermaine Hopgood, who ha- are not proven players themselves, I'm leaning. I'm going with you, mate. So I'm leaning towards the Storm. Um, I just think that record is unbelievable. I think they can. Uh, I think it might be. The one, the one sort of player that scares me still a little bit is Nick Meaney at fullback. I was just looking at that. 
Nick Meany at I don't, fullback. I don't, I, don't, I don't rate him at fullback. I'd I, still have Munster at fullback. Yeah, and I'd, so would and, I. I'd, and I'd put someone at six just just for four to six weeks for Pat. Mm. You know what I mean? I'll just make it work. Because when Munster goes back, he's still a top three fullback in the game yeah. or a top five fullback. Who can? But who could play six? Surely they've got a young kid there. Well, there's a young kid, Jonah Pezzett, who dominated in the under-19s. Troy Pezzett's kid. Yeah, uh, he's a yeah. brave guy. Um Solid, solid uh, trial yeah. form. He was, he was solid without being great. But um, man, but I, I'd I go with Munster because I love Munster. I don't he's the one around. question mark for me. I don't think if if Belly loses this, I reckon they'll make the change. And if Meany gets monstered, because I just back, I just don't back his. Um, all fullbacks are pretty big. And they're real aggressive. Nick Meany's more of a winger. Mm. He doesn't like that con- confrontational shit where Pat will take those little half gaps. Nick Meany's good on the wing there when he's backing up the yes. good centers and all that sort of shit. Not not following him on that, but it's a different beast being fullback. They fucking kick. You got twelve blokes just piling down trying to kill you. And if they're going to pump it right, which they want Nick Meany to come off the second wave, you get hit even harder. So you're going to go kick it right down there, and then Nick Meany's got to take the second carry or the third. They're going to load up their power. They'll load the box up and go. Good luck. So that's that's the only thing I worry about with Melbourne at the moment. If they had Pappenhausen, and you'd be saying they're going to be in the eight. Remember a couple of years ago too, in the last couple of years, one thing that the Melbourne Storm and Parramatta Eels have always had too, really strong ben- benches. Yeah. You look dry, Mamacia, unproven from Newcastle Knights. Um, I like him as a player, but unproven. Jack Murchie, same thing at the Warriors. Widamu Gregg's been in and out. Makahisi Makatoa. Uh, and then on the other side, Tyrone Mushart, Alan McDonald's a goer, a bit of a, a goer that we've liked for a while here. Uh, Chris Lewis and Jordan Grant. So... I always like Melbourne benches, but yeah, because they know that they're ready to start. Yeah, traditionally, but who fucking knows? They it's bring dem- that energy. It's yeah, yeah. they want to be part of that culture. They buy into it and they're full on into it. So like, that's why I can't go past Melbourne. Even like people going, this, this will be the year where they don't make the eight. Well, yeah, wait. If they don't have Munster and they don't have Hughes, then I might. Then I might. They still got Harry Grant and Pappenhausen might come back. So as, as long as they got those four players. Still going to be in there. And shout out to skipper Christian Welsh. We tossed it up. Yeah, we thought work. he might have been part of a vice captaincy. Uh, the Prez and Romy, vice captains. Christian Welsh, well deserved captain. Yeah. Uh, anything else, TNT? What's your thoughts on that? Oh, and before we cross my anytime jam, so my anytime try scorer, <laughs> I'm going to go. I still think that that Parramatta right edge, um, that's been a problem for them for a while. So I'm going to go Xavier Coates. Nice solid start winger. Two tries, I reckon. To, yeah, to kick it off. If you, I just need him for cross one for OG. Yeah, but, um, he's a gun. They, they missed him last year. Yeah, and they missed. Um, mm. Smith. Yep, Remus Smith. Those yeah, big bodies. They well. they miss those two bodies coming out of yardage, and I think they'll help Melbourne a hell of a lot because Meany will probably pass it a fair bit, or he'll take this as a fucking challenge and just beeline for anyone. They've got you know a, I mean, I hope he, hope he takes the ladder. They've got a new kid from uh, – not kid. Well, he's been part of the system last year. I think he played in Queensland Cup there. Will Warbrick, he's a beast, bro. Wait yeah. to see him play because I know OG did – he yeah. does, OG doesn't fuck around with trials. He only waits the fucking in yeah. season, just like when he played. But watch out for Will Warbury. Yeah, right. Watch those that eyebrow. He looks like a play. He moves well. He's a he's a not a nines a New Zealand rugby sevens player. Ooh. Yeah, so um, they're good on their recruitment. Him, him you Coates, don't recruit these oh, young bro. kids, man, unless they're going to fit into the Melbourne system yeah. and play the way we want to play. He looks like a proper Melbourne yeah, right. winger. So gonna they're going to unearth. That's what I'm scared. They're going to unearth someone who's yeah. going to play for Queensland or New Zealand or Australia, like. This guy, I reckon this Guaranteed. Will Warbrick will be up for Rookie of the Year by the end of the year. No shit. Huge call. That's fucking great. Parramatta, for Melbourne. Mm. Parramatta have had the wood over Melbourne for a little while, beat them twice yeah. last year. Does yep. that count for anything or is Melbourne's no. round one record just no, too No, I don't, I don't reckon because it's simple. It does simple, matter sorry. a little bit. It does matter a little bit, but um, Hodgson, Melbourne's record too, though. That's a, that's a mental edge. Hodgson being the new nine and that back row has never played together. The combinations are off. Dylan Brown... And that left side with Lane has fucking been dynamite. And that's gone. So Bryce, Lane's Bryce gone. Can't right, be so Bryce or Drias and Drias, Hopgood, like, depends what sort of, what, what mm. sort of, I haven't seen that much of these players. I've seen Cartwright. Matt Dury's a worker. He was at the Dogs. He's done some, he's done some good things. Yep. He went overseas, come back. So yep. he's earned his stripes here. But like yep. Hopgood, Apparently you know what I mean? Really good, uh, yeah, like Hopgood, you know, it's, it's all the combinations. And you know how important the 13 is in the game now? Mm-hmm. You know, like you said, but, but being so dominant, Mitch Moses has been so ball dominant. Like, he would take a lot of pressure off the 13. So they'll probably play a traditional sort of forward pack and just fucking try and roll yes, straight through. I agree. You. That's what they'll do. They'll take it out of their hands. So when you do have a seven who's not who's not a general who leads you around the whole field, like in and out, into place, that's when you need your 13s. You need your Victor Radleys and all that kind of stuff. Take a lot of pressure off the seven. Yeah. You know, he gets those, of- gets those back rollers going in. 
Big, um, speaking of taking pressure off, Big Junes and Regan still got those two boys. Got the, yeah, got the but they've got, the got Big Nelson and Welsh. Nelson you know what I mean? Welsh. They just cancel so, each other out. Yeah. They're just big fucking bodies. They, I love to see the collisions. And I mean, Junior Paulo and, and Big Reg had a great year last year. But like, fucking Nelson, he's fucking big Nas, man. Like, big nasty Nas. And, and Welsh is going to come back. He does all those little things, man. Like, he just does all those little things that you need your other prop to be. Who's your pick? Yeah, I'm Storm. Melbourne, man. Okay. Storm, storm. Beautiful. 13 plus. Wow. <laughs> okay, first game of the Friday night double header is in New Zealand. It'll be the Warriors versus the Newcastle Knights. The Warriors are favourites at $1.55, Newcastle at, at $2.45. Scope, how do you see this one going? Yeah, you never really like to be on the Warriors when they're favourites. Um, I think I'd be leaning. <laughs> what have what the tab got? For, what's the tab? What's the start for the, for the Knights? Uh, four and a half overs. Four and a half. I think I'd be having a piece of that if I was going to have a play. Um, but they've been impressive in the uh, – a lot of their signings, this is what we said even last year, OG, when we were doing the show, um, they're not names that are going to blow you away, but solid first graders and great for culture. And, even, you know, yeah. not, not as proven as some other guys that were signed throughout the season, but um, Chansey Nickel Klogstad was a really good player. He's been a good player at Canberra. He comes back to New Zealand, and you can tell it would mean a whole lot to him. Uh, Tamari Martin, I've got a massive rap. I think he's so underrated, mm. Tamari Martin. Uh, before he had his head knocks up in Townsville, he was trending to become a real player for the Kiwis. And who else? Mitchie Barnett. He's got, got that bit of dog in him in the middle. Uh, yeah. He's wearing the 10 jersey. I, I dare say he'll rotate with Tahu Harris. Playing against the Knights too, man. It's a big yeah, thing. Yeah, so he'll be up for this game for sure. Um, on the other side of it, uh, you know, the big question marks, KP. Uh, how many tackles are the Warriors going to say? What, what sort of... What sort of traffic? Do they have the guys? Do they even have the cattle in the sense like Jackson Ford, Murata Neokora? Yeah, solid first graders. Jackson Ford comes from the Dragons. But they're not like noted edge back rowers who like to target halves. And, you know, how much, how much, uh, how many tackles are they going to make, Caelan Ponga make? I think that'll be important. Or be involved in even. even. That's just having that collision. Then he mightn't be in. He might be involved in about 35, 40, hopefully. Yeah. But making clean one on ones on that edge. He might be making 20. Yeah. Or even if you're getting him third man in, like, especially. Yeah, like, that's the, what I'm saying. He has to be involved in that yeah. tackle. You want to get him in, put his head where he doesn't put it. Like, it sucks, but that's the way that he's going to have, that they're going to have to play the Knights. Cause he's their main man. He is. Pong is their main danger. Like, I, I don't mind the Warriors. As I said, like, what they bought. Nick Cora's a dog, man. He yeah, goes. He I goes like hard. Mitch Barnett, Fanul Blake hasn't put a whole season together for a couple of years. So he'll be looking to fucking start it off. And he's one of the best props in the game. Yeah. It, despite that, like, what the Warriors have been tossing up, he's still been one of the best. He's still props one of those game. dudes. Wade Egan, Wayne Egan's a, Wade Egan's a good player. Torhu Harris has been a gun. A foa. Curran. Tom Hale. Like, they're yeah, they're, like they're a decent of team. Yeah. Tamari Martin, Sean Johnson. I don't know. This all still goes off Sean Johnson. This whole team. Mm. You know, they need they need that kid – not a kid. Fuck, I keep saying kid. They need that guy to just do like be Sean Johnson. Yeah. Nothing like 2011, 12, 13, 14, all that kind of stuff. Just fucking Cronulla Sean Johnson. Dude who, who attacks the line, who goes at the line at least three or four times a game. There were some games last year, he didn't have no runs or attempts at running or meters or anything like that. So if you're a Warriors fan, man, you just want the kid to have a go. That's two, it. two new recruits for Newcastle off the mm. bench, Adam Elliott and Jack Hetherington. Scope, do you sort of see Elliott coming on and playing a bit of thirteen, or does he start on the? Does he sort of come on the edge? I, I wouldn't be surprised to see a late change. Adam Elliott starting, Kurt Mann coming off the bench. I know uh, yeah. Kurt Mann likes to play that roving back row. So if you think back to remember when Connor Watson was there, mm. and Connor Watson would sometimes get the thirteen jersey but come off the bench because you just want to take the juice out of the big boys early on. There's going to be like if you look, you look, look at the the Warriors pack. Adam Fanua Blake, Mitch Barnett, Jackson Ford, Murata Niakora, Todd Harris. Not much ball playing there. They're going to come at you. You know That's, where they're going. You know where they're going to go. They're going to try to come through the middle. So Kurt Mann holds, him, holds his own. He's been around for a while now. Kurt Mann's a surprising play. Shitload of first grade, actually. Yeah. Um, but I'd be starting at him, Adam Elliott if yeah, I was him. 100%. Because Kurt, Kurt Mann's Kurt played Mann fullback and center and wing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like He's not a genuine 13. He's a makeshift 13. Adam Elliott, is a, he's a middle. You're going to start that guy against the Warriors. I mean, yeah. I know he's been named on the bench, but I'm starting Adam Elliott all the time because Kurt Mann probably won't know when to inject himself. What sort of player is he? Does he want to ball play early? Fuck no. Not mm. against the Warriors. You set the tone. You want the 13 fucking coming off the back fence as hard as the other two front, front rollers. Like, I don't want my lock trying to fucking ball play, mm. trying to bring other people on the ball. Not early. I want my lock just going fucking at it. Yeah. And knowing when to ball play. And, take and that's, when he, that's what juice. Kurt Mann has got to learn how to do. 
because he's fucking back. He's an ex-back. You know, he still has that mindset. He's at makeshift 13. He doesn't know when to inject himself. What, what, what number carry does he take? Mm. You know, that Saifidi boys eat first. You know what I mean? And mm. then it might be like, so he will find that hard, I think, at the start of the year when to inject himself. And if they fuck around at the start and do what we're doing, starting Adam Elliott, he'll never find that groove. Mm. So do you just persist with it? You want to start you, we want you to play tough, this, 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 and then we ball play once we start finding a few holes in there. Do you ball play straight away? Understand who you're playing against. Warriors yeah. over there, first round, they're going to fuck you up yeah. regardless. It depends on who you're playing. The depends who you're matters. playing. Like who, who are you playing at the moment? Yeah, put Adam Elliott, Adam Elliott in. It's round one. We need the points. We need every points we can get. But that's what they need to understand with him. What sort of player Who? What sort of player he is, who, who he's got better leg speed probably than Adam Elliott. He's a good boy. He's like he can, he can ball play. But do we want him to ball play? I'd rather him hit holes because he does hit holes good. He's never a noted ball player. You know what I mean? Like I think you, you, I don't know where like, I don't know where he fits. That's why it's hard having a thirteen. Do you go traditional and put Adam Elliott at thirteen and leave him on the bench? Because I reckon he'd play anywhere in the back line. Yeah, and he could fit in the forwards if he wanted. Yeah, and Adam Elliott's a dog. Like he goes hard. Yeah, he yeah. wants to, he wants the confrontation. He fucking early. wants that smoke at the start, and that's what you want <laughs> against the Warriors because once they find a little bit of blood. In your pack, they're going full fucking tilt. I see this as a fairly high-scoring game. Do you agree? Yeah, I did go over. There's a. I can see nothing I can, crazy. I, I can. I can see one of the, one of the other really. Like what's oh, sorry? What's a high-scoring game in today's game? In thirties? Yeah. I'm so the under. What's the under? Have, have a look at the unders and overs on the on the. I'll get it up here from the unders. Are going to be like so 16, 14 it's, or something. Um, it's sitting for. I game. think it'd be about forty-two and a half. But oh, if, I, if I'm if I'm looking at this game, it can go. I could I could see it being real stinker. Yeah, like I reckon real, like 16, 14, a, Turn the fucking a, a thing off. A real error fest at half time. A real error fest early on. A lot of nervous energy, or or it could go thirty six fucking thirty, like thirty six mm. twenty eight, because yeah. um, they're not two teams that you know like to back the defense. You know, so it, it'd be interesting to see the way he plays out at uh, Wellington. I'm going to back KP. I'm getting on Caelan Ponga at $4.25. I'm going to add him to chase in the Grateful Eight. I think this is a real game that he can make a statement straight off the bat. Um, yeah. There's been a lot of question marks about him. Everyone's uh, questioning Adam O'Brien's decision to play him at six. I still I am. Think, I still am. I don't think it changes too much. Yeah, I'm with you, OG. I don't want him to tackle him that much, man. But I, I don't, I don't think, think, think it changes within an attack. That's my point. So hopefully they can I, have that I combination, and they've been working hard to train. Obviously, that's what they've been doing. But like, I, don't, I like um, the Warriors back five: mm. Nickel Clockstad, Selesniak, Braden with the arm. You know how hard he goes, Pompey, and like Montoya. Did you see fucking Montoya in the trial? Charlie Staines. Yeah. Oh my god, oh. Charlie Staines! For fuck's sake, what are you doing? Wish he was back in Penrith. Oh, he saw what the what, fuck wish, did I sign? Wish he was back in the mountains. <laughs> yeah, so I don't mind. I, they, they'll never. They'll, they won't struggle coming out of yardage. The Warriors. And you don't know what sort of you don't know what Sean Johnson's going to show up. Mm. Hopefully, it's the old school Sean Johnson. And it's funny when you look at it, it's like the, the old and the new, right? Because yeah. KP's still relatively new, even though he's been around the league for a minute. He's oh, he's a young Kiwi boy, like he plays for Australia, but yeah. everyone knows. And it'll be interesting like to see what heritage Jackson Hastings. Hastings, yeah, is he going to be like getting ninety fucking touches a game, like at the Tigers? Yeah, does he? Have I don't draw? fucking want that. Mm. If I'm KP, mm. fifty max. Yeah. Uh, and an interesting one as well, Dom Young's just signed the Roosters. We talked about him off the top of the show. How he handles that, he's a young kid, uh, come from, uh, played at Huddersfield. He's a wakey, young wakey lad. Now he's, does he start peeking over his shoulder and start looking at the Roosters? There's been chats uh, about the Roosters. The early, the early. We're trying to get him early. Why would they want that? They, Who? Oh, Knights down, wouldn't want it. No, 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 but they're down on a centre. Uh, so they're probably, I yeah, think Joey's Josh out. So uh, Alan's Joey's back there. Out. Yeah. Manu's only out for a yeah. yeah, they're looking for the depth and stuff, man. Because yeah, they, why would they want an early, early, early sort of transition, whatever it is? Yeah, they, they asked for that, didn't they? Yeah, can we get him this year? Depth. They let they let go of a few depth players. And if I'm and Dom think, Young, do I want to go down there if you got the, that sort of star 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 studded back five? Well, if you're Roosters, you're looking at. I reckon something's there. Someone's injured. I, no, I reckon Roosters are like, we can win the comp. Like we can legit win the comp. So let's strengthen up as many positions Everything. as we can. If we can get him now, I think the, the Knights were looking for the one of the butchers in return. They ain't going to give up the butchers. What's up with, um, what's her name? Uh, Joey. Joey Manu? Yeah. He thinks he's out for a couple of weeks. Facial he had a, fracture. Just yeah. did a, uh, he had a, con- he had a training in, uh, injury. Yeah. That's why he got ruled out yeah. of the Indigenous game as well. A couple of weeks shouldn't be too bad. But just back to the Warriors and the Knights, boys. Who, who do we like? I've got the Warriors. Okay. Mm. I'm going to go the Knights with the start. I don't like... 
I don't like the Warriors as favourites. Just I like them from they're a over there. Over there, it's it's over there, right? If I can get that's four, why. I think. Can, it's at Wellington too, though, so it sort of loses that mystique of of playing. I didn't know it was there. Fuck. Yeah. All right. <coughs> yeah, give me the Knights plus four and a half. Tab. Very nice. Eight o'clock game. Penrith will begin their premiership defence against the Brisbane Broncos, and man, they are short. According to the tab, they are paying a dollar twenty. Mm, Brisbane that's are out. Disrespectful, at, isn't it? Brisbane are out at four fifty. Uh, 450. I think that Brisbane have a great side on paper. Obviously, Reese Walsh was out this week, but I I see the Broncos as a smoky for the eight. Fuck. Where, where do you guys see them, Mace? Where, I'm, <laughs> I'm with you. I think they're going to make the eight last year. Like, that was in, unbelievable how they fell out of the eight. They'll yeah. be still looking at that like, fucking hell, what happened? They were almost Biggest the opposite to Para when Para made it in 09. Like, yeah. they couldn't make it in 09 and they made it. Yeah. You, if you looked eight weeks out, you're like, nah, Broncos, there's no way they don't make the eight and they fucking somehow didn't. I just think that they'll come back to the pack, uh, Penrith. You know, you can't lose Kikau and, and Appy in one year to the best players in their position at this time and then just think they're going to be like just rolling in with Mitch Kenny and, and Luke Garner as your um, replacements. It's Solid a bit players. A, a good play, Solid no disrespect. Players. But, I mean, Mitch Kenny's been coming off the bench giving you 20 of the best. Mm. He's got to play 80 now. Mm. He can't be hitting as hard as he did for 20 minutes. He's going to be he – has, like, he has to manage the load. So, I mean, you've got Sony Luke there unless they want to do the same sort of thing. Mm. And I think that's what they're sort of planning on. But I think they will come back to the pack a little bit, but they will still be dominant. You know what I mean? Like, they've still got that culture there. Their defensive systems are great. you still got Cleary, arguably top three player in the game. Luai, Toto, Crichton, Tungo, Turva, Edwards. Like, that back line's ridiculous. It is I still scary. Got, it's scary. I've got mad respect for Penrith, but every, if – Players won't come out and say it publicly because you don't go challenging the big dogs until you nah. get the runs on the board. No. But every team across the league will be looking at them going, We can get them. I don't mind them without kicking them. Uppy, man. Yeah, they man. were a problem. Like, hey, well, they, they won't be going, teams won't look and disrespect them and go, We're definitely going to beat the Panthers, but we're going, Fuck, I like it a whole lot better. We're not going we're right. Kick now we're going right. Out. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? Never, we, used to block off that side. Yeah, of the kick field. out was just sitting there going, fuck that. I'm like, you're not coming this way. And players never went that way because you got popped. Now, if they have, you got Garner, or depends. I reckon if they might put Martin on that left edge. That's the rumor. Yeah. They might they put are. Liam Martin because yeah. Garner played right side back row for the Tigers and he played yeah, some, Garner good, will play some really good theory. lines. Liam Martin had kick out on the bench a couple of years ago because he was playing so good at left edge. You know, so the, the, and the combination's there of Luai. So I don't, I think that'd be the smart move. Twelve and a half starts. Right edge just makes all the tackles. Twelve and a half a lot. Twelve and a half starts. Twelve and a half a lot for the start of the season. Would you take that scope? Do you think Brisbane get close? Hundred percent, I'm taking. I'm it. Very intrigued by obviously Sel and Cobo playing fullback. That looks like to be his position of the future. Whether he's up to proper NRL standard is yet to be decided. Uh, but he did look good in that indigenous Different game. Different workload, man. man. He looked good. he was in good Nick OG in that not uh, at the start. In, in, indigenous game. You do those mistakes against yeah. Penrith at the start, you're That's gonna true. be way off. You know, That's we end up true. coming good, but like you're not playing against Penrith today. Um, yeah, I just think the, the the load management will be important for him. You know, like how many Ks he's going to get? He's been doing what? Just say six or eight Ks on the wing. Yeah. Now he's going to go like the twelve plus, fifteen plus, maybe in some games. It's That's fucking good. solid, mate. Yeah. And obviously he's done the work and he's confident in it. Otherwise, he wouldn't put himself out there. I rate the kid highly. It'd be it'd be it'd be different. He's got the skill set to play anywhere. He's just one of those players. Put him on the wing, put him fullback, put him center. He can just play. Yeah. It's ridiculous. He's one of the best finishers in the game already. I wish him nothing but success at the back there, but I could, the, that's so disrespectful, man. They're 450, the Bronx. The Bronx could get him. They have the team to sort of they, – they will not be scared of Penrith right now. They'll be like, all right, you look out for us. They'll have that mentality. You know, mm. round one mentality. You've been fucking talking all since like November. Mm. They have all these meetings and what we want to be and what we stand for, our culture, this, that, this, that. A lot of people have been talking some shit. Now you've got to back it up. Yeah. And they've got the players to back it up. They've still got a fucking star-studded team, the Broncos. So I think they could they could possibly – I'm not going to back them, but I'm like, they, I would not be surprised if they go, oh, fucking the Broncos won round one. Yeah, one no, of the I would not be surprised. One of the positional matchups um, I'm looking forward to, two guys that are really going to be pinned against each other for the next two or three years. Our guy, Paddy, Paddy Tough Carrigan <laughs> and Isaiah Yo, yeah, um, the two probably premier locks. Uh, you're obviously throwing Cam Murray and, and Victor Radley. Uh, Jakey's moved Jakey. up to the front row, but um, 
Paddy's established himself as an origin player now mm. already in one series. Strange Isaiah kangaroo, Yo. Tour, kangaroo Tour at the end of the year. Isaiah Yo's the the, the incumbent uh, lock for and the basically it's from an outsider looking in how important Nath is because Nath's got so much to deal with. It looks like the leader of men out there is Isaiah. So yeah. Isaiah Yo. So well, they just um, lost Appy. I think Appy was that dude. Yeah, he controlled the tempo of the games and everything like. That. So it'll be interesting to see how Mitch Kenny goes. Yeah, and but his I, and his, uh, his linking because yeah. he opened so much up for Isaiah too. It's one, yeah, man. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Payne Haas and Fisher Harris. That's what I want to see. Yeah, the two big boys. Payne Haas didn't have his like he probably didn't have his most outstanding year last year, a few injuries and everything like that at the back end of the year. This is like a full-on 100% fit Payne Haas. And he's going to be going to Fisher Harris because everyone thinks Fisher Harris is that dude. Mm-hmm. He's the number one prop in the game, right? Mm-hmm. Payne Haas thinks he is as well. Yeah. So I want to see that. And Leota. Yeah, some good matchups. Some good there? matchups. All right, so going to the anytime try scorer for this, chasing the grateful eight. At the back end of the season when the Broncos really started to struggle, their right ed- edge was really struggling. I'm going to attack. I'm hoping... OG's mail is correct. I'm hoping Liam Martin's on the left edge over there with Jerome mm. Lui. I still think it's going to be a dominant side. Even though Nath plays in that team, a lot of their energy and their yeah. attack still flows to the left edge. Um, and uh, it's a big season for Jerome too, man. Like now, uh, they're, they're always, there always seem to be question marks around Jerome. Yeah, has, he, now, has he arrived, do you reckon? Uh, yeah, I think he's arrived. And this is just another... Why is everyone questioning it for? Oh, I think... Because like right now, like like right today. When, when, so when you when you look at it, when you look at Penrith and and you know potentially playing, if you if you a lot of people you could sort of plug and play. Like you look at Sean O'Sullivan had a pretty good season when he played in that Penrith. Yeah, system. I get it, so, man. I get it. It's very the, Melbourne esque. The knock is Melbourne esque. Is he yes? Is he a product of his environment? He proved a lot of doubters wrong for Samoa in the World Cup. That's where I dominated. That's where I think put it to bed. Now he's got another challenge. No kicks. So. Back but in, you got Cleary. Do you know what I mean? Like, so he, he was the man in Samoa. Yeah. So he, but he didn't have Cleary. Yep, Cleary is true. the dude. So he can take control of anything Cleary. He has the right to do whatever he wants. Yep. You know what I mean? Does, does Luai have that confidence? Like, Give me the game. But what did I you say before, OG? No one used to run at that edge before because he had kicks. Yeah. So now potentially Jerome's going to have to make an traffic. extra five to ten tackles a game. Maybe five on the minimum. Because most of the guys, most teams, want, they all want to get it three men. Yeah. Inside, outside. They'll be playing at him all the time. Still gets a good enforcer in Liam Martin, yeah. but... How many um, times they run at kicks or yeah. he's, they ran at Luai and kicks just come over the top and just went bang. Yep. And like picked them up, picked picture. them up, picked them up and just... Dra- I've seen it at training. It happens. And no one gets past him. Like he's one of the best defenders in the game. He's got that strength and he's just... He's not just strong. He understands the game. He knows the angles and everything. Picks up and you're done. You know what I mean? So Liam Martin is a dog. He's 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 proper. Yep, he just he doesn't is. run like kick out, man. Solid bench too. Kenny Palacio, yeah, Thomas Flegler. It's fucking Corey good team. takes Martin top pole. It's be a good game. This will be the game of the round, I reckon. Mm, yeah, it will be a good game. I, I think the I think there's way too much points. Uh, I think it's going to be a closer game. So it's 12 and a half. Uh, we're, well, you know how good the side is when you look at 19, yeah, mate, 20, 21, 22, and 23. Like, look at Penrith. You've got Eisenhower, Tyron Peachy, Jack Cogger, Lindsay Smith, and Zach Hosting. Like, two, three of those players would get in the NRL right now. Yeah. You know, Peachy, Peachy would be on the bench for most teams, right? Yep. Before and Eisenhower's pretty good as well. Mm, before I ask you for your tip, boys, uh, these are two fairly evenly matched sides on paper, yeah, they albeit are. across the park. Uh, where's this match won, mate? In the middle. Yeah. It'll be Payne Haas, Fisher Harris, Leota, Jensen going at it yo. all game. Yo, and yo I think Yo, yeah. Who dictates better yeah. than him? Patty and, I, and uh, Yo. And see, I even think, the nines, Billy. Say, you, see, the nines you. aren't. I'm not sold on both nines, Billy Walters or Kenny. No, Kenny's Do good you know defensively, what I mean? but he doesn't create as. They're going to lose the whole heap. But, but I don't think Billy Walters is a nine. Yeah. And I think Sony Luke is very creative, but he's mm. not a good defender. Mm. So you've got two players. I think Sony Luke would be like working on his defense all fucking preseason. So if he gets that right, everything else will come all right. And you come off the bench, you won't be able to, you'll be able to hit players because he had to bulk up a little bit. Mm. Like, you know, he's, yep. he's a bit small. So I think his whole thing in the preseason would have been working on his D, working on his D. You know, like Billy Walters, he's not a genuine nine. You're going to get at him. Fisher Harris is going to get at him. So is Leota. Isaiah Yo knows how to like get at him all the time, play those block plays. So Mitch Kenny's going to go crazy in Mitch the Mitch Kenny's going to try minutes. and pump everyone. everyone. He's going to get at Payne Haas. He's trying to get at his yeah. ribs, get at his thighs, everything like that, trying to stop Payne Haas. If you stop Payne Haas, you stop to go forward. That's where Carrigan needs to come in, come over the top. Jensen needs to play a hand. Because you've got to understand when Payne Haas gets the ball, man, you're going to get two or three players yeah. attacking him. From the inside, all the, all the time, they'll be hunting him and hunting him all the time. So 
up the pain house might have developed a pass this year. You know what I mean? He needs to do that trying to try to get those early sort of hits, pass the ball a couple of times, few offloads here and there. So he needs to go to that next level with his game. Big year for our dog Tony as well too. Needs to he's take back. his game. Yeah, Tony's back. He had, he's had a few uh, in- against Crichton. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's sort of held his progression yeah. back a little bit more than oh, the way he was projected a couple of years ago. But I, I think him he, highly. I think he'll be in for a big season. Uh, I think me and you and base. I'm going to go. Twelve and a half is too much. That's a good head start for him, but you wouldn't be surprised if Broncos. I win. wouldn't be surprised if Broncos. Win. Mm, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to back Penrith, but yeah, I'll take the I twelve like and a half start at yeah. the tab. Beautiful Saturday. It's the uh, it's the Levels Cup, boys. Mainly in the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> levels <laughs> Cup. I think the dogs have. I mean, obviously, been there for the whole preseason this year. You know, you, you sort of, you know, you're a part of the club. I'm part of the club. You know what I mean? But you're part of what they're doing and going forward as a club and everything. You know, I want to see him fucking go good. You know what I mean? And it starts right now, you know, from okay, what, 7th of November all the way till now. It starts now. You know, there's a lot of ups and downs during the preseason, all that kind of stuff. That's what preseasons are about. You know, and now they get their chance to go out there on the weekend and, and fucking live what they've been talking, you know, um, and breathe it. And it's going to be interesting to see. Who are you most trusting, excited to see out of trusting the, the guys? The, trusting the process and trusting the system, yeah. right? And hopefully going out there and just like applying it on the field. So it'll be good, man. I want to see Avrilo go. Yeah? Mm, yeah, I've been okay. excited about him. Looks sharp as fuck, man. Yeah. I'll kick outs. I want to see kicks go. I want to see like all these, all, all the middles I want to see go good. But like, you know, like Karaz, I like that. I like that little edge, a little combination you got on that right edge of Fatal and Mariner and, you know, Avrilo and, and Karaz have been training really well. But, it, you know, you can't train and play all trials or anything. For the game, for round one. Yeah, yeah. It's totally, it's nothing fucking, matches nothing matches the intensity. You know what I mean? You can play as fucking, I don't care about what happened against the Sharks. It's fucking totally different. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, like you can take whatever you want out of that. It's a totally, it's a fucking whole new ball game round one, playing at Brookie three o'clock. And this is what you've been fucking waiting for. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I'm as pumped as the players. I fucking love it. You know what I mean? I, I just can't wait to see him get out there. Trust the process and perform and have trust. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's going to be amazing. Before I go to you, Scope, I, I saw you on Twitter helping uh, Luke Thompson off the field. Yeah. Day. Very disappointing. Oh, yeah, I'm shattered. Shout out to Luke Yeah, Thompson, I'm shattered for Tomo because yeah. I mean, Ogre and I were holding the pads and I've never seen anyone get injured in that drill where you just – you hold the pads and someone runs through it. He just – his foot got stuck and he fell over his foot and he done a Liz Frank. Oh. So, mate, I've done a fucking Liz Frank. I didn't know that till today. I read something on the on the Telegraph on Twitter. Like, I did Liz Frank in t- 2004. Mm. You know, it's not, it's not a, it was a, it's not a good year. injury. It was supposed to be a big year for you know, him. And I love Tomo. He's a yeah. fucking great, great, great kid. You know what I mean? Like, you know, he's good for the club and it's, I'm shattered. Like, I'm actually shattered for him regardless if I was involved in the thing or not. Yeah. Like, to, see, see, to see a person train that hard and put that much work in and then the week of round one when you're selected as a starting prop for our team and then it's taken away from you. You know what I mean? I'd be an arsehole if, if I didn't feel bad. Of course. You know what I mean? Like, I was sitting there going, fuck, you wouldn't wish that upon your worst enemy let alone one of your boys you've been training for fucking three months, you know? So, like, I wish him all the best in recovery and, you know, like, it's, it's just a terrible thing. It's a football accident, you know? It's, it's different if someone's going, jumping at your knees and all that kind of shit, but, like, it's a football thing, man. It's just it's awful. Bit of a reshuffle in your forward pack now. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Sutton moves to the front row from 13, Farmanu Brown into the uh, lock position, mm-hmm. and a bench of Jaden Tanner, Corey Woodell. Jaden Tanner. Franklin Pele. The big eagle. They call his nicknames the eagle. And Jacob Preston. Nicknamed himself <laughs> you know why <laughs> cannot be caged <laughs> sorry eagle um no good person yeah. great young kid you know he's been training his ass off and working his bum off like all pre-season i'm looking at his picture now he looks like a guy that would nickname himself yeah <laughs> you'd love the eagle <laughs> don't worry about that um yeah it, it's gonna be you know they just as i said trust the system and the process you know, one player comes out, one player goes in. And that's the way it is. That's the culture we're trying to build. You put that jersey on, you're supposed to do the job. Yeah, definitely. Scope, Seagulls, what do you like about them? The, it's, there's no point in, in going past the number one jersey. Uh, Tommy Travojevic, this team, it goes as far as their best play goes. It's exciting to have him back. I'm excited about it in the sense that I've seen what that trip to the States did for the troll. I don't year. like it. It gave him, uh, <laughs> Give him two more weeks off. Fuck you. You're a manly great too, yeah, OG. Of don't, course, of course. Don't forget about that. <laughs> 15, what a year. We, geez, we had some fun back at the Red Lair. Uh, but Tommy, Tommy Travojevic, um, 
I'm excited for him, man. I'm, you'll see we're about to get to our future bets with the tab a little bit later on where um, I'll give, we'll give you a few plays. But um, I'm excited because I just think you could see – I watched a little bit of the, the vision from overseas uh, that Manly put out from – Still really good mates with the skipper there and the seven daily Cherry Evans, and he's come back with a different steel about is him. He? Yeah, he's come back with a different confidence, which is good for New South I Wales, love, OG. I love, I love that. Just this week, yeah. I would have rested him. Yeah. I said, you know what I would have went? I said, hey, Turbo, how are you feeling if, I, yeah. if I'm the performance person? I feel good. I should be able to play it. Another week. It's always another week. I would yeah. always say that. That's not me saying just because Turbo's playing this weekend and he's yeah. a great player. Yeah. He's a good friend of mine. He, I, I love him. I wish yeah. him all the best. I want, to, I want him to play the next fucking 10 years uninjured, but... You know, whenever they, you know, the player's always going to say, I'm ready. Of course he's always ready. Like I would have said, two more weeks. Whenever you think you're ready, Turbo, give me two more weeks of rehab. Yeah. I don't well, know. I just care I, I just I, care about him. I want him and his mental health and everything like that. It's fucking hard. Yeah, for sure. And that's a big part of it, the mental side of it as well. You look at sort of Latrell at the back end of last year. Um, they went on a massive run, but even just having him around the locker room, mate, because yeah. you, you, you think back to those early games, uh, if you remember watching the Rabbitohs when Trell first come back, he even said it, I think, at one point, the, the Ferrari's still in the garage. He was yeah. still waiting. Like, he still wasn't 100%, but and just that his power presence, game. Remember that power game? Yes. That, that, that presence was still there. And Turbo, what he, yeah. What he adds to the rest of the players, like, you'll see, um, I've got a massive rap on Kelma Tuolangi already, Hamoli Olukowatu, who's established himself as one of the uh, better young back rowers in the game. Oh, yeah, for but, sure. But, like, he makes Brad Parker so much better. He makes Ruben Garrick so he much better. He makes everyone better, Turbo. He makes everyone better, Come bro, on, so. man. Like, and, a, sorry. And his brother, Jakey. That Jakey one, goes to another level. When that Tommy one year, plays. three players score over 20 tries. Yep. Saab and Gaz, Garrick. Yep. What did they score last year? Fucking not even 10. Like, that's how much of a difference he is. Like, he is fucking next level one of the greats already. You know what I mean? That year he put together a couple of years ago, no one's ever going to replicate. We said it a couple of years ago. It was like, it's bullshit. No one's ever going to put this football down. Like, not like that. Not that. Not in today's game. Like, yeah. it was ridiculous. You know well, what I mean? I'm backing him to I'm I love him, him mate. I want, to see, I want to see him play fucking amazing all year, just not on Saturday. That's Hell. it. I'm being totally honest. If he just comes back and just finds his groove a little bit in the back 10 when we're already up by, like, 14, <laughs> yeah, get your meters up, Turbo. So good, you good luck. <laughs> he didn't score as many tries last year. He kicks a few points. For my anytime try scorer, I'm obviously leaning towards the Bird Gang. I think he really opens it up for Ruben Garrick. Ruben mm. Garrick could not only cross for one. He might be able to sneak so a little how double. Many time, in there how many well, times do you does. see, like on the left side of the field, Jay Chaboyevich lead, Cherry Evans around the back, or Turbo around the back, yep. finds another person? Like he makes that decision look easy where yes. everyone's flying, right? Yep. So right to left, he either hits the Santa Brad Park or he hits Ruben Garrick. Yep. And he catch, even, and he, but he catches the winger either coming in or sliding back. Yeah. He's looking at his feet. It's ridiculous how easy he makes it look. Guys like KP and they do it all the time. Halfs, five eights, they've got genius stuff. But he's flying around the back. He squares up the best of them. And he always, nine times out of ten, makes the right decision. Turbo's even good enough to beat the player that's wedging at him, potentially skips inside yeah. or outside of him. And then he sort of just flicks the shoulder and could even roll over yeah. himself, but he ends up just going. Yeah. Well, how many times nice did he just give me a little gimme? Like, and especially Gaz just goes boom, thanks. He scored three tries on the, like right in the near last the line. Like right well. near the line, if you give like if you give it a four six look and it's ten meters out, and he's sitting behind the play the ball, you better be fucking on it, marker. And you better know where he is. It's like when we we're playing. If I saw Billy Slater in that position, if I'm a middle, I'm fucking flipping over. Move. You know what I mean? You gotta you gotta like know where Turbo is on the field all the time. We haven't um, been doing any work on it at all, so go where you want to. But. <laughs> um, I'm going to throw one out there as well. The, obviously, Kix is a, a great buy for you guys, but I'm going to throw out little Reed Marnie. He's going to be the buy of the year. I think um, fair assessment. I think I think uh, even now it's not even round one. Yeah, it's not even round one. <laughs> it's a fair assessment. I, th- I think on that first trial, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've fucking seen it more than the trial. I didn't give a shit about the trials. What he brings to training yes. every training session. I, every time I've watched Reedy, and I've said this for a while now, I think he's been pigeonholed at Parramatta. Yes. Um, I think it's going to bring out the best in him. Playing for the Dogs, being able to play a little bit, not as a dominant half as having a guy like Mitchy Moses there who who really wants to ball. Um, I think Reed Marnie's going to be the buy of the year for yeah. me. So I'm excited to see him play. He's a proper dog. Yeah, he is. Congrats to him. Skipper with Maddie Burton as well. So 
Should be a good game. I think there's going to be a lot of points in this. Yeah. It's a new pitch. It's it's not like the old Brookie. Bring old Brookie back so no one can move around one. It'd probably, Fucking heavy legs. It would probably done, suit uh, Done after 10 more. minutes, right? Yeah, yeah. Fucking hell. Have I been doing anything at fucking preseason? <laughs> when in 2015, was around, well, I was like, holy fuck. Good old Brookie now. He played 80 in the next week. I think uh, <laughs> no, so. I yeah, I'm, I'm obviously leaning towards um, you're not having a punt on it, Mace, but you're obviously on nah, the dogs. Of course, yep. of course. Yep. More I'm, way I'm, on, I'm on Manly, mate. I'm on Manly, and I'll be tucking the overs in that game as well. I think there's going to be a whole heap of tries. It's four, uh, lines out at four and a half. Dogs got a four and a half start. Do you like that? Four and a half start? No, I still like Manly. Okay. I still, not crazy. Not a crazy amount. Um, so interesting just, round one, isn't it? There's yeah. no fucking runs on the board at all. I don't give a shit if you're Penrith and that. I'm still looking at Brisbane going, fuck. Yes. I think Brisbane might have better, better players than you guys at the moment. In certain positions. In certain yeah, positions. I'm looking at well. that and, like, and I'm looking at this game going, fuck. Like, that's what I'm saying. Round one is so fucking unique. You don't know what you're going to get. It's like round one in, in NFL. Fucking teams get blown out that you think are going to win. That's what I mean. It's fucking even money everywhere. A lot of jam to be made, eh, Hoss? some jam. <laughs> For you. <laughs> you leave that to me, OG. That's my jam. Yeah. Up in Townsville, the Cowboys will the take Ville. on the Canberra Raiders. Oh, a bit of a, right. a bit of a heat change there for the Raiders. Oh, the Raiders. It's a tough one. It's yeah. a tough one. It's a tough yeah, carry. Cowboys start at $1.37 favourites. Canberra out at $3.15. Uh, both teams were top eight sides, uh, but may – Cowboys, are your uh, tip for the premiership. They are. Do look they, at that. Look at that fucking side. It hasn't changed since last. It hasn't changed. Look at it. One to seventeen. Tommy Gilbert and Hamaso. Hamaso was on the bench. Yeah, I know. Tommy but like, he, was, he didn't was really. He didn't. Well. And Luch has been stood down. Those two players. Oh, Luch, yes. Those two players are like very replaceable, and they were, weren't they? So look yeah, at that back line: Drinkwater, Felt, Holmes, Hiku, Tuolangi, Deed, and Townsend. McLean, Robson, Cotter, Hess. And, and Cohen Hess was probably he was probably benched last year, and he proved Lost. himself, yep. and he ended up killing at the back end of the year. Dude. Hess, Nanai, Talmalolo. Enough said. Jake Granville is it Name Griffin? Griffin, big Griffin big, big, Griffin big Kiwi kid. Name. Yeah, Griffin name. Animal. Yeah, I love him. Very. Tanoa good Brown. Animal. Too, James Tarmout. Animal still. Jake yeah. Granville. OG like with James Tarmout. They got a good side man. If they can, it's hard to replicate what you did last year, right? You know, if even if you're a Dalian winner or anything like that, it's hard to get that exact same year. But like that, those fucking things should be replayed in their head. What they did against Parramatta, those couple of decisions would be replayed in their head. Like, and I'm not sure if they're big on that sort of shit. Maybe Todd Payton is just reminding them how they fucking felt because you got the exact same 17. Huh? It's not like you got five new players. Mm. How did you feel last year in that in that prelim? You don't want to feel like that again. They'll be driving that until this year's over. So I'm just going to go with it. I'm going to go with the Cowboys like all fucking year. I just think – So am I. Yeah, I one, like to, one to 17, man. I just think they're – and their depth's good, combinations of everything. And this is like all saying – this is – with everything's going good. You know, no one gets injured. Everyone plays at their top tier. They're going to be hard to beat. Bit of a reshuffle through the backs for Canberra. Obviously, Xavier Savage was injured through the trial. Yeah, Sebastian bugger. Chris replaces him at fullback. Yeah, fullback. I think yeah. I think we'll probably see maybe Chris start off, and then if it's Fuck. not working out, maybe Rups will go back. Jordy Rups will go back to fullback. Could Jack White got... possibly go back? Oh. No, is he nah, too important we'll... at six? Yeah, they don't really have anyone else um, that can. Yeah, come Rups can go there that. a little bit. Rups has played a little bit of fullback for him at the back end of twenty one. He's played a, a bit of fullback. Um, Where's Big Papa? What happened to him? Big Puffs is out for this game. I'm not too sure why, but he wasn't. He hasn't even been named, so he must be carrying an injury. Uh, not, I'm sure someone in the comments will let us know about that. Um, but I just think this is just the, the absolutely worst round one game that, that the Raiders can play. We talked about the it's, the it's the climates, right? So Canberra coming down from probably um, training in the in the coldest climate out of any of the teams in the NRL. Maybe Melbourne could be worse than Canberra, yeah. but they be, wouldn't be too far away. Canberra's probably And then you cold. go up to Townsville, and obviously everyone knows everyone, anyone who's been in the north of it's Queensland knows what that's like, especially at round one. It's torture playing there in winter, let alone round one. So Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's round 24. It's still fucking hot. I think it's a massive advantage to the Cowboys. I don't think the eight and a half, I think that the tap have got on board is enough. So I'll be taking the minus eight and a half at $1.95 on the, uh, that the tab have got available. Um, there's still got a heap of dogs there at Canberra. I just yeah. think they're going to take a while. I, I actually like Canberra. I just think they're going to take a yeah. while to build into the season. Um, I agree. I agree. It's just, six, it's just it's an awful lineup. Yeah, it's just the worst possible and matchup. And the matchups are good. And Cowboys, it's not like Cowboys last year. They didn't know who they were. We beat them round one. Mm. 
know what I mean? That's, up yeah, up that's there. Right. So like yeah, now you've got a team fight. that's been there for another a whole year together, a whole another preseason. They've had a big run last year. Guys got some big caps, some Australian caps, some Queensland caps on the way, collected them. A lot of people got some new form, drink water, tell Malolo. Just fucking Confidence. Val Holmes. Val Holmes was at fucking another level, finished the year at like starting centre for Australia. You know what I mean? You got now look at that team compared to last year, and like everyone's got another another cap here. Yep. I think drink I think drink water's really gonna come out firing for him, eh? Yeah. I think last He's, year was like a confidence year for him to he yeah, took is a he in New South Wales or, or Queensland. He's probably South Queensland. Wales. I think yeah. he's in South Central Wales, Coast Central Coast boy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um I think it took him a while to establish himself. Yeah. He was down in the Melbourne system for a while, spent a and couple of years in the Cowboys. And he was off contract and as he, well, so he had to play for a contract yeah. as well. And they've shown some faith while letting him go at Hammersoe too. So it yeah. takes that. He's out Even dude. last year, as good as he was going, you're sort of like, oh, Hammersoe's still there. Still on the bench at 14 going, we're just watching just in case. And, it fucking bought, and I love that because yeah. he had everything to play for and everyone sort of sent me down to him. Hammerso had a gun year the year before, played for Queensland and all that sort of shit. And he come through. I love that shit. Yep, so do I. Bit of resilience. Um, shout out to Harley Smith Shields. Big fan of him. Played a bit of golf with him um, recently. How, how seems like him? A, sounds like a really <laughs> Seems like a really – he's a really good kid. Um, they really like him down there. Jackie White and Jamal Fogarty starts the season as well. They really kicked on at the back end of the season. Remember when Fogarty yeah. came back in the team after the same getting, free. getting young injured, Sulo, young started. Sulo from Newcastle, right? Yeah, I went to school with the, I went to primary school with his dad, Kevin Sulo. <laughs> oh bullshit! It's fucking true. <laughs> well, I'm, talking that, like, I'm talking like eighty-seven. That's why you call them. I'm talking him eighty-seven. No, why are you calling East? them kids? Yeah, you're they a fucking are fucking proper, kids. Proper OG. <laughs> I'm forty-two. Yeah, I went to I went to school with Kevin Sulo, his dad. Like, Small world, eh? Yeah. He learned, I, I, I copied off him how to do my shoelaces up in year <laughs> fucking two or three. That's why I remember him so well. Yeah. He was in front of me and I went, oh, that's how oh, you that's do how shoelaces. You do that's how you do it. Weird story. But well, like Cowboys, I mean, mate? Cowboys, yeah. Cowboys. I like a minus eight and a half to – I think they uh, I think they put on a, a couple of tries on the Raiders at least. Who's your anytime, Scott? My anytime. Thanks for that, TNT. I am on – and this one's this one means a lot too. So remember, la- like how I said last year, I was seven from eight. It mm. come down to the very last game, Cowboys Not versus Dragons, game. and Val Holmes didn't score for me. So he's <laughs> the one that broke the grateful away. So just because I'm like I'm that yeah. guy, yeah, all right. I'm on Val Holmes. Two dollars ninety, you can get him on the tab. I'll give you a hundred bucks if you get eight from eight. <laughs> the fucking real one. I'll be, I'll be getting more. It should be paying like fucking a hundred dollars. That's how impossible it's it is. It's paying to get. way more than that. Oh, it is. It's right. paying way more than that because I've got a fucking proper dog at the end too. <laughs> I haven't. I haven't taken. Look, there's a couple of wingers in there, but so far, if you've been playing at home, Xavier Coates two dollars oh five, Callum Ponga four twenty five, Liam Martin three ten, Ruben Garrick a dollar eighty five, and I just did Val Holmes for the North Queensland Cowboys two dollars ninety. 7.35 game, boys. This is my match of the yeah, round. Yeah, sorry. I, the Canola is, Sharks and the this South City Rabbitohs. I didn't, watch, I didn't check the schedule. <laughs> That's all right. Two, uh, two sides that played Why did you very, say there was a game well of the round before, did you? Penrith and Bronx. <laughs> that, at that time, it was. Hey, that's all right. That's all right. We're well, here I'm, now. I'm in the moment, We're here man. Now. I don't check that shit. Yeah. Forget that call <laughs> earlier, viewers. This is the game of the round. <laughs> yes. Sucks that Nico's out, though. What? Yeah, now Panthers. it's coming back. Yeah. They just got Ron back. And Panthers are back. You're fucking kidding me. What happened? Mace, tell me why you think this will be the game of the round. <laughs> well, I was just I thought Nico Hines is the best player in the world at the moment. Mm. If you go off his Dally M. But like just like like look at those names, man. Mm. Kennedy, Cattell, Ramey, and Talakai, Mortalo, Latrell, Johnston, Isaiah Tass, Campbell Graham, Isaac Thompson, Cody Walker. You know, Matt Moyle and Trindle. Like, look at that. It's fucking crazy. Tatola, Burgess, Kaloma, Tungy, Jairo. Building a culture. Cam Murray, Fanukam, Wilton, Nakora, Braden Newelli, Tom, Toby Rudolph, like, Brayley. Like, they're fucking good first grade players. They're all fucking vets and they all know mm. how to play. And, like, look at, look, fucking Cameron McInnes, Wade Graham, Oregon Kafusi, and Jack Williams is your bench. That's Such a solid Sharks bench. Sharks is man. fucking good. And that's what they've got over South. Blake Taff, Cheekam. That's Wale clear advantage, Sharks and Mitchell. I'm not sold on South's bench. I'm sold on their 13, not their bench. They've probably got. I actually don't even mind their bench, but compared to Cronulla's bench, that, look at look at him. Cronulla's bench of, is stacked. They're good, man. Yeah. So like, I, I just look. I was pretty impressed by the Sharks against against our boys. You know, they just they just got there. They, they he's built a culture pro- already, yeah, hasn't he? He doesn't he doesn't care for it. I knew mm-hmm. what he was going to do, mm-hmm. and he was just like, let's fucking. Fucking not fuck around in trials. Every game's a game. 
Mm-hmm. And so you have build those habits. Everything's like competitive and fucking, you know, I know what Fitzy's like. And I am, as a player and as a coach, he's very intense human. So he's always going to have these guys up. And I think, you know, South, South's a fucking great team. I just think Sharks look better. I look and that's these, not with Nico Hines. Yeah. I yep. look at these sides, boys, and there isn't too many – well, South didn't sign anybody, but no. you look at Cronulla and the only new face is Oregon Confuci and he's sort of coming off the bench. Mm. Take Wilton's into the starting side and I think he's going to ease him for a stellar oh, year. Where's Hunt? Did he get injured? He's injured, unfortunately. Because yeah, that would have even stacked him up more because Hamlin Ueli would have been on the bench and Oregon or Jack would have been off. Yeah, that's Jack a fucking off. seventeen. They're Jack, so deep. William, Jack Williams would have been off, and he's—I like him too. That's what I mean. Like he's a first grader. He'd slide into anyone else's team, wouldn't he? Scott, we talk about the the depth of the bench for Cronulla. Uh, obviously, their four pack was very, very good last year. Does that make up for the absence of Hines? Do you think you know? Just on paper, obviously, you match up South's bench up against Cronulla's bench. You know, does that roll forward through the forwards lay enough of a platform for Trindle <clears> to do his job? Yeah, I think um, the one, the one sort of main reason that I'm leaning towards South. Um, I've got a lot of respect for what Cronulla did last year. Uh, you know, even last year, I think I mentioned that, you know, all back five were guns were coming off contract together, yeah. Mace. Yeah. Fitzy seems to have managed that the yeah, right, I don't right, know right how. possible way. Got them all to potentially stay for unders and what they would have got on the market to stay there as well. I do love this team. I, If Nico was playing, I'm leaning towards Sharks. I'm going back over to the Rabbitohs just because – the Rabbitohs clearly know who they are now. Like, yeah, you can look at it in the sense they've failed because, you know, it got to the preliminary final or the grand final in the last five years. But that's a team that knows how to win, man. They win – They that's a team that knows how to win during the season. Um, and I just know you, – you, you'll be watching the game. Here's what's – you'll be watching the game – and you, you sort of start to see a, the, the imprint that Craig, Craig Fitzgibbon's having at the Sharks already. When you see Souths flowing, you'll go, oh, shit, that's like that left edge. Mm. That's who Souths are. I reckon you're going to go into the game and they're going to – AJ's going to score first straight off the bat. He's my anytime try scorer, by the way. <laughs> nice and easy. Roll that one in there. Oh, AJ fine. will score first and you'll go, oh, shit, that's just Souths. Like you said, TNT, they haven't made any changes. No players of note come in. They're breeding these youngsters through. They kept their main three. I said the uh, Sharks were lucky to keep on to their back five. They mm. kept – Rabbitohs were able to hold on to Cookie, Cody Walker and Latrell, even though they had still were contracted for this year. But for next year, there's no head noise about where they're going to go. They're South Sydney Rabbitohs and – I think they get the job done in a close one against the yeah. Sharks. And this game went to Golden Point at Shark Park last week, mm. last year too. So um, I think it's going to be equally as close, but I'm going to stick with the Rabbitohs. Yep. Same nice e- yeah, I, I like the Sharks, but I just think their mentality will be different. They'll be like, we finished second last year and we got bumbled out straight away, mm. straight sets, mm. filthy. By- filthy, yeah, and one by South. And uh, – I just think, you know, when you say that left edge and you've got Cody and all those sort of guys, you've got Jesse Ramian, who's one of the most underrated, best defensive centers Definitely. in the game. And you've got Katoa as well. They've got, they're fast and aggressive. And I just think, and I think, I think maybe Trindle or Matt Moylan will be over there as well. Will it be Moylan on that right edge? Moylan and Pays, right. Yeah, so he'll be that right edge. And you go back rower, you've got, um, yeah, because Nico was playing late. So you got but Nick, they were no, interchangeable too. So you got yeah, Teague Wilton. So Teague Wilton will be the right four as well there. So they're good defensive players. Your middles work really good. Like Finucane will be putting massive inside pressure onto Totola and Burgess. And so will uh, Hamlin Llewellyn, Blake Braley, Toby Rudolph. Really mobile middle who will get at those ball plays, making them pay, making them play that one meter too early where half a meter in the middle and making them these nines in that play. Mm. Is five meters out wide yeah. that, uh, that you cut off Alex Johnson. Fitzy knows all these sort of rules that if you play in the middle, it's, that was the rules there. If you can make him play a little bit early, make Lachlan Elias play a bit earlier, make Tatola pass a little bit earlier to all these guys out the back. And then if they can shut that down from the middle, you know how they fan out. Mm-hmm. And then next minute, Alex Johnson just touched the ball, beautiful pass off Latrell. Yeah. It'll work perfect mostly all the time against, against, yeah. against a really shit defensive system. You're not going up against your shit defensive system. You're probably going to go up against one of the best they'll see all year. And I just think they'll shut that shit down. They'll manage the middle. Toby Rudolph and Ueli will probably do – it'll be a good battle in the middle with with Totola and Burgess. I think they all cancel each other out. The only way to bring that – to nullify Cook, I always say, is like dominate the middle. Mm. 
And these guys, are, they fucking play together, like, and they don't lose any momentum. You know, Finucane and all these sort of blokes, they just fucking nonstop at you. You know what I mean? So I don't think they're going to be really scared of Tatola or, um, or Burgess. Cam Murray's going to be doing Cam Murray things. But I just think Cronulla have You're that team. Cronulla? I just think Cronulla, Cronulla have yep, those yep, teams, and that's without fucking Nico Hines. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I'm just saying, with that left edge, how dangerous it is, you can fuck it up by being disruptive in the middle mm. and having a bunch of blokes who just work and work and work. And that's who Fitzy has. You have to fit the way Fitzy wants you to play to be in that system. He understands what you have to do to stop that left edge from looking fucking fabulous and ridiculous, you know? Middle pressure, middle pressure, making Cook play early, making the middles play early, making Ilias play early, inside pressure, getting the ball out of fucking the Sixers' hands so Latrell doesn't have those free fucking hair. Like, you know, that's the team that can stop it. Yep. Scope, who do you like? Yeah, I'm on the Rabbits, mate. I'm on the Rabbits in a close one. I think OG's... Be fucking close. It'll be close. Yeah. It'll be close. It's the game of the round. If Nico, yeah, if Nico Hines... Yeah, round. it is the game of the round. If Nico... Yeah. I didn't even fucking know of Nico. Yeah. Hope he's all right. Yeah. Um, he should be back next yeah, week. Yeah, he's just got yeah. a little... It's a little tweaky one. He's, he'll be sweet. Yeah, if Nico was playing, he'd be definitely on. You still like the Sharks? Two yeah. 50, you can get them on the Yeah, start. I like them. Mm. I just think the system that they're in, and we're just watching them move last week, the amount of pressure that they put on our sevens and nines and all that kind of stuff, it's fucking impressive. Yeah. And that's not even round one. Game of the round. Looking forward to that one. What's that? Saturday night, 7.30? Saturday night, 7.30. Uh, we then go out to Sunday, 4 o'clock. The Dolphins begin their inaugural NRL campaign. The Dolphins. Against the Sydney Roosters. Could be a mess. Well, yeah. at right. this point, the tab thinks it might be the Roosters are out, are, are in. Where's this played at? Up there? Suncorp. At Suncorp. Suncorp, yeah. yeah. They're going to play I think that's worse games, for the Dolphins. Yeah. Roosters dollar twelve favourites. Fucking dollar twelve. Yeah, Tab's got him as mine. That is disrespectful. Dolphins out at six twenty, but accurate. It's fucking accurate, but I don't give a shit. Nothing's <laughs> worse than dollar yeah. twelve. That you is don't... nothing. That is like the you don't even have a chance in hell. I don't They're think they still I've... got a chance. Imagine lining up. Like, I don't think I've ever played in a game where I've lined nah. up with teams less than dollar twenty five. Yeah, fuck me. That's mad. Disrespectful. Even all the time. Mace, how do you see this game playing out? <laughs> it better be even most of the time. Um, I, I, I see it. I don't see it playing out exactly the way the tab sees it, but fuck. I mean, they're not they're not tried, they're not tested yet, you know, um, and and the Roosters are. They've got a gun side, the Roosters. It's like, tricky one for the Roosters. They started slow against the Knights last yeah, year, remember? It's, round it's, one. They're not they're not a shoe Similar in. Similar sort of fucking think. margin, I think, and the Knights got them. I think without Luke, KP. Mm. I think seeing like Luke Keary. Like, I want to see him. We talked before. I think Luke mm. Kiry, he's, he's, he's going to be a smoky for the Dally M. You've got to understand, a couple of years ago, he was that guy. He's won three premierships. He was a six for Australia. He was a six for New South Wales. Does his ACL, gives all those jerseys back up. What do you think his mindset's been? Yeah. I'm fucking getting, getting, his rhythm I'm back getting everything back. He ended up killing it last year. They were, they were nearly on a run. But, like, his mindset's like, I'm, that, I'm still that dude. You know what I mean? Like, so you got you to understand that people like that, winners like that, they don't just go into seasons and everyone sort of count him out. He's a fucking contract year as well. He's going to come back. It takes 18 months to get back from an ACL. It's been about that now. Now he'll come out of the blocks and he'll be fucking on. Sam Walker will go to another level, but it'll be all because of Kiri. Sam Walker's growth got stunted because Kiri, because Kiri was injured. Mm. So he wasn't that dude to, mm. have, to have the whole team to himself. Yeah. Well, He's got a bit of help now, and that will help Sam's growth go bigger. He played better he got, as a the, Robin the, last yeah, year, didn't the he? the combinations with, uh, with the cheese this year, it's going to be good, man. Kiri's one of the fucking best in the game. Yes, Don't get it twisted. Like he, had, he was a six for Australia before Munster. People have forgotten, haven't People they? have forgotten. They forget real quick. Mm. Fucking Kiri hasn't. Trust me. That yeah. 2018 grand final. People within the game, people that play against Kez know he's, he's yeah, a problem. Yeah, they know. Too. You know what I'm looking at when I'm looking at these sides now just on paper? I know it's like it's different in a way, but it's not. It reminds me of when Wayne coached that the worst Queensland team of all time. Like when I'm looking at the lineups compared to the Brewsters. So yeah. it gives me Queensland versus New South Wales vibes where you look at on paper, even though Queensland still had some handy players and chairs and, and Munster, they didn't match nowhere near close to what New no. South Wales were. And this looks like a complete matchup. Can can the OG do it again? He can. Can the OG? Can I, he, I, I, I don't just, know. He, I don't know if he, he can, can do it for install, a season. He can, can he install, pull off a game? Yeah, yeah. Round one. He can one? pull off a game. So that's what I'm saying. Like he can install the amount of in so much confidence into these young kids. You think you're fucking an Origin player yourself? You know what I mean? The man, the swag that he has, and how he carries himself, and what he says. He could install like just you know enough to get him over. Like if, if the, the roosters, fence? if the roosters are they don't if they disrespect don't if they disrespect the whole Dolphins, which they won't. 
You know what I mean? But if they go up there with a fucking like 90% attitude and mm. fucking Dolphins are all at 120, first inaugural game for a fucking new franchise. That means, that's history. You don't get many times in your career to be part of history. Yeah, they think all these fucking words are being said all week, all year, especially driving into this week. Drop you want to be part of history. What sort of fucking history do you want to be part of? 54 mm. nil. No. You want to win your first game. It's a massive thing for the club. You want to be part of the club, club's first win in your first round. And that will that could carry you into a into a win. I'm not gonna say it would, because it's the Roosters, but if it was anyone else, anything lower, the other mean, like give him someone else who's a bottom four team, I would have went fucking dolphins. I got I got so much respect for the Roosters, but I don't care. I just talk myself into back in Redcliffe. Yeah, no. yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I think you're like well, the if you point. watch the show, you'll end up back in Redcliffe. Yeah. Um when you when you play and you and you're sort of like a team like the Roosters, they got 20, sorry they got people, twenty thousand members, right? People, like yeah, people will look at it and think it's a layup. It's a lot tougher than you think yes. to play a team like Redcliffe round one. Round one, a lot of energy. Roosters would love to be playing Rabbitohs. They'd they would rather playing, do that. They'd rather be playing Penrith Eels round one. Pumped. They're expected to win by nineteen points against the Dolphins. It's a it's a. I'm telling you, man, the mentality sometimes in these games. It's going to come back to real good coaching. Obviously, Robbo's got that. He'll be, make sure that they've got the right mindset. But again, like the Panthers, the Broncos, you know, creeping up on them early, making it ugly early on. There's a part of me that thinks the, the yeah, Dolphins yeah. will make it ugly early They'll on. They'll make it ugly. The They'll be trying to complete at 90%. Get They'll to be your trying kicks, to win kick, every effort. Kick, chase, all the effort plays that you can't really mark. You know what I mean? Like, no, no one's really going to see them. Everyone down on kick, chase, plus one, plus two, three, kick pressure. For 80 minutes, if they can do that, then they're in with a chance. But easier said than done. I look at the Dolphins and I think that they will be quite defensively resilient. I think yeah, they will be. Well, coached by Wayne. It's all def- but, defense. But the biggest question for me is where the points come from. Where where, where do you Kicks, put deflections, yeah. effort plays, yeah. fucking you might get you might get them slipping, you know what I mean? Like just they're just gonna be Wayne big will try effort win, plays. Win a game 12, you don't give a shit if it's fucking two nil. Twelve eight. Yeah. Just as long as you win. Like, yeah. Wayne ain't gonna be that coach sitting there like fucking 0 and eight. Yeah. He won't, Might even be an interceptor, like a yeah, just, off the shoulder. As I said, wedges. like just competing. You got to compete. If you compete with everything, that's what Wayne makes you do. You're in. You know, you might have. You won't. You, you might win the 50 fifties. Yeah, you, all these little things that the players know they need to do. Because the Roosters and if you're looking are the for Roosters. points, TNT. You're looking for points. You're looking for try scorers. Uh, if that last trial was anything to go by, they had a bit of joy attacking the right edge for the Redcliffe Dolphins. Obviously, it cost Milfie's job as well. Uh, he was awful <laughs> in that trial. Uh, Daniel Tupo, though, um, it won't take much for him off, nah. the back of, off the back of Mace's point with Luke Keary, playing some really good footy at the back end of last year. Um, I think it's just, you know, injury. The only thing that stops Daniel Tupo from scoring a try on that edge is injury. So, um, yeah, I like him. It's, 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 it's relatively one of my small ones, but I've got a big one coming up next. So give me Daniel Tupo, $1.45 at the tab, and that's seven out of the eight for the great weight with one to go. So, um Looking forward to the last one too. Right. Who's our, who is the lucky last? <laughs> we'll get there in a game. sec just before we jump to the last game of the round, boys. Are we both going Roosters? Roosters. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. If I was going to – if, if you had to make – went from play, my mentality, go on the Dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> you I'm, talked us into it. I'm going I'm to go plus 17 and a half for the, for the Dolphins. I, I don't think a Wayne Bennett-led team gets blown out nah. um, like they did, especially off the back of that awful trial that they had against the Titans. I think he um, he said a statement with Drop and Milf. Yeah. Um, I reckon he would have really got into the troops, and I got I, I got too much respect for some of the OGs in that Redcliffe team and the Ford Pack in particular. Yeah. I think uh, I don't think they get blown out, so it wouldn't be a game I'd be betting on. One to if, twelve game. Head, you know, but if you're going to make me take something, plus seventeen and a half. Brilliant. Last game of the round at the eighth wonder of the world. The West Tigers take on the Gold Coast Titans. Tigers are favourites. Oh, no. <laughs> Where's this at? Dollar seventy. Leichhardt over. Oh, it's at Leichhardt. Oh, how good. Uh, Gold Coast Outsiders at $2.15. Uh, boys, Mace, how do you see this one going? Well, I like the Tigers. Thanks, I mate. do. Um, just because you go for them, I don't really care. But <laughs> I'm just saying. I, but I like – this would be a good game. Low I reckon this would be the highest scoring game of the, of the round. They've got a lot of attack here. I want to see how Appy goes, man. I really do. Mm. Look at that pack. Toy Kamanu, Clemmer, Appy, Papali'i, Bloor, 
Off hang out. That yeah. is a fucking decent pack, man. Nice, that is nice, a nice, nice pack. Nice it's play. well balanced. Johnny Bateman's in the country now, so he'll be, he wouldn't be too far away as well. Yeah, like and imagine him at twelve there. Then mm. you got a really nice, well balanced pack. Um, they're going to play that power game, aren't they? I don't want Big Smoke and Joe ball playing. Just run the ball. You got, uh, you know, Clem. Toy Kamanu was just like ragdolling everyone in those trial games. Young kid that you need to watch out for, Fanua Pole. Yeah. He's a gun. Gun, he's 18. Yeah, he's it's a ridiculous. Weapon. Yeah, I like him. I he's fucking like, love him. Yeah, yeah. Did um, TNT, did you throw his name around a little bit in the, in the episode? Uh, it was Justin Manamura I've got a big rap on. Yeah. Uh, he's a he's a lock forward. He's on the extended bench at the moment, but Joff has got that spot. But yeah, Fanua Bowl. Looks sensational. There, Shout out to Sean Bloor and Tommy Talao. First game back. First game's back after an entire season mm. off. But yep. uh, scope for me, I believe that this game is won and lost with uh, the performance of Kieran Foran. What do you think? Yeah, well, he's key. He's key for the Titans. Um, obviously, Brimo wins that spot at fullback, which was a lot of people had alluded to during the preseason with Jaden Campbell coming off in that fourteen role. Fozzie looked really good against Redcliffe. Um, just really. Uh, Gave them some direction. Like it's, it's like it's what we, it's it's what need, we talked about, right? They've got a lot of front runners in that team. They've got a lot of guys that like to play footy, but he just added a little bit of class to them. Um, whether that translates into round one footy is yet to be determined. Gets a great opportunity, respectfully against the Tigers. TNT. I like the team on paper, but yeah. yet to see it and yet to see how they um, perform when it matters. Um, yeah. The one thing you take away from the Tigers is really impressive, and up, up he didn't even play. So that's um, yeah. so that, that that's a, a thing that Tigers fans will be loving. But they've got some exciting outside backs here, man. At, yeah. the, uh, at the Titans, that that Cam Pereira scored four. He looks like he's got some wheels. Message Fozzie about him. Caught him mini fox. He just flies. Mm. Um, Jojo Fafida F- 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 um, got a massive rap on him. I think he's going to be a player. He's faster. Than Cam yeah. Pereira. What? Yeah. Well, Jojo, oh, Jojo nearly chased down or did chase down Fox last year when he mm, took a step, it? right? Yeah, in that game against the Titans. In, uh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. So Fafita can motor too, man. Um, Big Tino, Sam Verrills. Be one in the forwards, man. Eric think- Clark, Mo Fodawaka, Joe Stimson, Jaden Campbell, good bench. I like the bench. Still a lot of question marks for both these teams. Hey, shout out to this kid, Keno Kinney. Kinney, I think he's a young Moldy boy, about 18, 19. 19th, man. I think they, they like him too at the mm. Titans. Yeah, I've seen a little bit of a write-up on him. Um, I think he's a player that they're expecting to do big things maybe halfway through the year. They match pretty but, evenly, aren't they? I'm yeah. Just looking at these forward It's a packs. very hard game to pick, man. I can't it's, pick it's it. It's a massive flip of the coin Like, they're me. exactly nearly the same players. God. Um, they're a team with – you know what? They're exactly the same in the sense they're a team – out of the teams that are down the bottom – They've got talent in the team. One of these can go into the top eight. They've got, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I one agree. of them because I think the Titans would be filthy on what happened last year. Yeah, you know, and so the Tigers, the Tigers, like I'm, we're a better team than that. They're a team with talent, but a shitload of question marks still. Because so they many, haven't mate. done it consistently. You got to give them ten games before we can make a fair assessment mm. on the Tigers. But mm. I look at, you know, I, I do look at the Titans and go, yeah, that's a decent side, and they've played together for a fair like two, it's their third year all together. So you'd expect some sort of continuity. Consistency going into round one. Be, be interesting to see what sort of Fafita turns up. Mm. How, how much how much ball he gets and who's on his side. Is it Tanner? Is it Tanner Boyd? He's got Tanner Boyd. Is it Tanner Boyd or is he's it? Right is it um, yeah, he's on the right yeah, but, edge of Tanner. Or is it four and does four and attack both sides? Four or are you just left edge. Fozzie looked to be staying predominantly on the left edge. Let Tanner Boyd hate on that. the right. Um, they linked up pretty well where they both come over on the left hand side. But I'd love to see Foz go more over to the right and yeah. get Dave, Dave involved. Um, but they look so sharp on the left; it was just pumping. Because this him. won't be any, this won't be any like Victor Radley, Cam Murray ball playing. This would be like very basic one out football that I'll just bash and barge. Because have a look, Toy Kamanu and Clemmer, Big Tino and Joloff. Even when they do go out the back, it's very telegraphed, mm-hmm. and you can see it coming. So it'll be up to the it'll, it'll be up the battle of the middles again. I always say like it's up to the middles if we're going to win or lose a game. And I just think Tigers have got better middles. Well, speaking of middles, Mace. Let's move on to my anytime try scorer. Yeah. I'm going the Tigers front row off the back of some crafty play. How many times near the line. last year, near the line, did you see Upi Coruscant putting over Spencer Lienu, James Fisher Harris, Isaiah Yo, Moses Lyota? So I'm going big Stefano, yeah. Kuto Ikemanu. Nice. So I'm finishing off with a prop. So imagine it gets down. I'm seven from seven and I'm Ooh. riding a pig. Come I'm on. Riding the middle. I'm on big <laughs> step. I'm riding big step for the Grateful Eight. What a way to finish. So um, 
That is my final before we get on to who I'm who who our picks are for this game. Giving you a wrap on the Grateful Eight. So if you get a follow with the skip, uh, I put ten dollars on that. You get odds of two thousand three hundred and forty nine. <laughs> So you get a decent Bang. collect, but a lot's got to happen. Xavier Coates, two dollars oh five. Mel- Paris versus Melbourne to watch. Kalen Ponga, Warriors versus Newcastle. Anytime four twenty five. Liam Martin, three dollars ten. Penrith against the Bronx. Ruben Garrick, dollar eighty five. Manly against the Bulldogs. Valentine Holmes, two dollars ninety. North Queensland at home to the Canberra Raiders. Alex Johnson, dollar seventy two. Cronulla versus South. Daniel Tupo, again right on the left wing. Dolphins. At Suncorp to the Sydney Roosters and finish off Big Steph, the biggest of them all. I just want him to score now. $6.50, Stefano Uta Ikamanu, West Tigers versus Gold Coast at Leichhardt. What do you think about that one, TNT? Steph will get the job done. It's just (laughs) 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 Alex Johnson, (laughs) Daniel (laughs) Tupos, you've got to watch out for it. Yeah, you've got to watch for fucking Alex. Sorry about Big Steph. AJ and Toops will let me down. Stefano's got you. Steph will get it done. Steph will get it done. The middles always take care of business, man. Come on, bro. That's All right. It. Well, um, good luck to everyone chasing with our friends at the tab. Go on to the bed slip. Follow the skip. Uh, the grateful weight chasing the grateful weight. Back to the West Tigers versus Titans game. Flip of the coin because I'm going to be riding Steph. I'm riding with you, TNT. I'm going to the Tigers at home at Leica. Yeah, I'm Tigers at home. And it's another thing. Sorry, it's at Leica. Yeah, it is. But our record there isn't as good it as, isn't as good as It's a new team. Yeah. It's a new team. Who it gives is. a shit? They can yeah, start the new true. fucking that's change true. narrative. Yes, exactly. Hopefully that wasn't the kiss of death, but uh, go those times. They never win again. <laughs> they knock Leichhardt down. <laughs> All right, boys, just to finish off with our friends at the tab, got some season predictions for futures. I am going to say straight off the bat, Mace has given us our tips, but obviously he's not gambling on it. He's part of the Bulldogs. But I have the markets for you regardless. I asked Mace to give us his tips for the grand, Mace and TNT. Grand final winner, Wooden Spoon, top try scorer, top point scorer, and I've got the odds for you via the tab. Um, just remember, Mace is not betting on them. Just giving you the odds for it. So no, grand final winner, boys. Me and Mace, we're on the boys. Yeah, Cowboys and Sharks. I'm Cowboys and Sharks are my bet Ooh, for a grand final. Okay. I was fucking going to flip and yeah. go the Sharks because yeah. I was very impressed with what I saw. And I just think they can get better. But I just keep – I want, I think North Queensland, they'll have that drive that'll be a lot, lot, just a little bit better than the Sharks. All right, just by I'm, losing the premium. I'm with you on the Cowboys, and I've got your pick in the grand final with us. I'm on Cowboys and Roosters, TNT. Okay. Who can you see joining them in the grand final, the Roosters? Because you've got – Don't so you fucking if you're playing dare. at home – Don't um, you dare say Tigers. The Cowboys, are, the Cowboys are paying 11 bucks. TNT's got the Roosters, 550 Yeah, I like the Chooks. There's not really a chink in their armour anywhere, even with a couple of injuries. Their back five is flawless. Forward pack's excellent. In the grand final, probably – Probably South, I reckon. Oh, I, that'd be I would dream. love to see it. I I'd would love, love to see that. I'd I just love to see that, GF. They've got great starting 13s. It's the bench that I, I reckon if it gets to a South Roosters grand final, South win that. I'd want to see that. Mm. Be rugby imagine league's that. a winner imagine, there, right? Imagine the city would go crazy. Mental. Imagine the sin bins. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully Ashley Kine's not. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll all call right. for your head. Picks for the wooden spoon. I'm going to get it out of the way nice and easy, boys. We're all on the Dragons. $4.50, oh, believe it or not. Shit. Um, look, I think it's, uh, for me, I think it's a coin flip between them and Redcliffe at the tab. And if you get $4.50 about them compared to $2.60 to the Redcliffe Dolphins, I'm just going to take the value in $4.50. Mace, yeah, you didn't even look at the odds. You nah. just think probably Dragons. Yeah, I just think of all regardless. the stuff that's been going on. Like, yep. you know, for the last couple of years. This is not like just. Just this year, last couple of years, and then the the snitch, his fault. Yeah, the snitch. TNT, anything else to add to that? No, I think Hook's on borrowed time, unfortunately. Uh, Very disappointing to see anybody lose their job, but I don't see the Dragons doing too well this year. Yep, we're on the same page there. All right, top try scorers. I'm I'm banking on a healthy Tommy Turbo. I'm going Turbo. Um, I think he starts slow. I think he really comes on. Um, I'm banking... And maybe, maybe more so. I'm trying to visualise it. Um, what's the, what's yeah. that? Manifest, manifest yeah, manifesting it. Speaking it. Into Mani- existence. I'm speaking a bigger manifesto existence. than that. Tommy Turbo <laughs> plays a completely full season. Takes us all the way to potentially a GF if he can get there. But I just want a full NRL yes, season. So do before I. Four finals. Therefore, that puts him in a great opportunity to get the lead. And I'll be happy to see that. None, none this week. None this week. But for Tommy Turbo, but Mace, you're going with the boys still. Murray to Magic Murray to I just think that combination with Val Holmes is only going to get better. That was yep. his, their first year last year. Val Holmes, I'll end, up, I'll end up with double digits, both of them, I reckon. 
Okay. On the tabs, futures markets, that's paying $23. Oh, nice. And for TNT, you're staying with Manly, but not on Tommy Turbo. Yeah, I haven't got the crystals out like you have trying to manifest it. But um, I like Ruben Garrick down that level. Ah, oh, get yeah, okay. oh, I think he only if tur- yeah, This I, all I, happens I, I if, turbo turbo plays his, if Turbo plays more than 20 games, that only happens. Yeah. You know, right, that. And you if, know that. Uh, and if you think Turbo's going to play a full season, therefore setting up Ruben Garrick for plenty of pieces of meat, $21 about that on the tab futures <laughs> market. Ooh, We're rolling man. on to the top point scorer. I'm going back up your way, Mace, uh, because I think they've got the Cowboys in the grand final. Um, I didn't have him as top try scorer, but I think he's going to be top point scorer. Again, I think he goes back to back. He had it last year. Yes, Val Holmes. Val. I'm on Val Holmes, $5.50. Uh, Mace, you've got an outsider. Reynolds. You got Reynolds. you got a little Adam Reynolds. Obviously, the yeah. goal kick inside That's of it. Value, man. Don't That's a value, man. That's a I don't hate it, Mace. Mm. I don't hate it. You. Like I just didn't think of his lack of try scoring. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think of a person think- like Val. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I would have been on Val. TNT's got a good all pick as day. Well. Sorry. All right. So if you're playing at home, uh, come think, on, Adam Reynolds. If you're following pick Adam Reynolds, everything. Mace, it's thirty four dollars on the futures Dang. market as well. If you're playing it at the tab, TNT. You're rolling with Ruben Gaz again. I'm going Ruben Gaz yeah, again. Yeah, that's, that's fucking Great fair. Yeah. It's better than mine. Tries. That's, that's my pick. <laughs> yeah, oh. $7.50 about Ruben Garrick. All you right. don't break Hazamel yeah. Masri 340 points, but. Yeah. Shout out to Haz. Haz. <laughs> uh, and the Dally M, Dally Messenger. Uh, you can't bet on this anymore. There's no markets for it. But. Like I said, if I think he plays a full season, yeah. I think he's the best player. I think he's the best player in the competition if he's healthy, and that's Tommy Turbo. So I'm going Tom right. Travojevic, Dalian. Yeah, mine is uh, Luke Keary. Yeah, I, just I like that one. I fact, do like that one. All the factors that you got to write in ACL, everyone's sort of doubting him, like contract G, all these sort of things. Big year for roosters, the roosters. Big year for the Roosters. Like he's going to be that dude. He is. Um, you know, so I think. Oh, I hope he does get it. Good kid. For me, boys, I think that if Nathan Cleary plays 23 games, yeah. that his last couple of years he's been restricted, 21 was injured, 22 suspended, I think 23 is the year that he's And he would have won both those, I reckon. He would have went close. Mm. I think this is the year. It's debatable, but maybe at least jag one of them. Yeah, it's crazy to think that. He hasn't won a Dal M yet, has he? This is the year, I'm telling you. He's still not even peaking yet. Adam. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thanks to everyone for joining us for the first set episode of Levels. Uh, we will be back. The format will be do- we will be doing. We will film every Monday, dropping on Tuesday, filming every for a review uh, of round one, and then we'll do a round two preview next Wednesday. This time to drop on Thursday, just before round two. So nice. Thanks for everyone for rolling with us. See you next week. Drop us a comment. Drop us a like. Subscribe. And again, thanks to our partners at the Tab.